Testing one, two, three, testing one, two. All right, we're back. Welcome, everybody, to the Boxing Podcast, broadcasting to you live from the true north. This is Frames to BDA, and alongside with me, as always, my co host, the one, the only King Bucho. King, are you there? Yes, sir. Fantastic. We got a lot to get to, ladies and gentlemen. Still pretty cold outside here in Chile, Canada, but I got a cup of green tea again. I got a thick sweater on and my comfy meter reads peak confidence right now. 
So thank you for joining us. Before we continue, if you want to keep the gravy train rolling, you know what to do. Just uh, if you want to, you know, give a thumbs up, subscribe, spread the BDA gospel. I'm doing two things at the same time here. But I uh, really do appreciate your support. If you get a couple of shekels, you can send that our way via the PayPal page, the Discord, or the, I mean, not the Discord, the, what's the other one, Bucho? PayPal and uh, Patreon. Patreon. Patreon, that's right. So that's what you can do. Or you can just continue, like I said, subscribing, liking the show, spreading the BDA gospel. Speaking of the BDA family, I want to give a shout out to Blues Boxing, Subash Kumunwar, Jason Bourne, Milo SM, Virtuoso, Jay Perez, Rahoa, Uncle Burnt Apostrophe, Azzy, Dead Game Boxing, Toby Barlett, Foul Paul Boxing in the house, Blues Boxing, SSB28, and more to come, I'm sure. Thank you for joining us. Today we have not a lot going on in the world of boxing, but there's always something to find. So we're going to have a lot of fun with that. Short show today, hopefully. We all got to do things here on a Sunday evening. Just upsets, call outs, a little MMA, maybe a couple of laughs too as well in between. So thank you everybody for joining us. We are going to be taking calls in a couple of minutes as soon as we get everything out of the way. The phone number is right up there on the top of the screen so you can call in if you feel so inclined to do so um i see we already got Stu on the line Stu, are you there what's up, yeah. Yeah, what's up? Good, well, to good, to, good to have everybody on board i'm cutting off a little bit here i think okay everybody hear me? hear you all right is it me yeah i can hear you you can, no, can, can you, hear everybody. All right, you can hear me? Fantastic. Yes. Right. Yeah, I can hear you fine. F -f Fantastic. I, th I thought it was cutting off or something. But listen, thank, thank you everybody for joining us. Um, we got a whole lot of things to get to here. First of all, let's get down to business with the first thing. Julian Williams getting beat and TKO'd by Jason Rosario in Philadelphia, his hometown. Uh, Julian Williams' hometown, by the way. Guys, it's interesting, man, because we were doing a second Renaissance show last night. And right before the fight, we ended the show. And I told, you know, where we recognized the Matrix, John Gonzalez. And I said, Is, you know, Julian Williams seems like the type of guy to me that can, he can get knocked out at any minute now, you know, against anybody. And But I said, but that's probably not going to happen to, uh, tonight. I go to sleep. I couldn't stay up to watch the fight. Wake up tomorrow in the morning and I see Julian Williams gets knocked out or TKO'd in the fifth round. I said, what the? Do you know what it is about um, Julian Williams? After the Jared Hurd fight, he just looked like a beast, man. He looked like a monster in there. And he does everything well. He throws shots pretty straight. He can fight on the inside, fight on the outside. I guess Hurd, he showed that he had um, stamina and endurance. And now he faces this guy who had a good record, 27 wins, I believe, one loss. Uh, he's only lost, by the way, to Nathaniel Gallimore, who is a good, decent super uh, middleweight, I mean, super welterweight. But Julian Williams just got starched. And I think it's because he's one of those types of guys he shouldn't be getting into exchanges. That's what happened to him. He got into an exchange. He got knocked out. What do you guys think? Did you guys catch the fight? And uh, if so, what did you think of the upset? I think he was doing okay. He wasn't doing that bad. It was a close fight. I think he was winning it was a, a, a i think round one and round two went to williams i mean it doesn't matter it was a close fight but then again this guy just gets i, I think also his chin is not all there to be uh -huh. honest um i mean what else can i say i mean it's, he's he's a, an okay fighter i guess right i remember some people remember low plays he had oh, Jared Hurd as his number two pound for pound boxer, oh. I believe. Yeah, because in Blind his mind, Lara was all was this great fighter, and then Hurd beat Lara and all this shit. And so all of a sudden, he had Hurd as top pound for pounder. So I always wondered if he had J Rock Williams as a pound for pounder because he beat. <laughs> and and I wonder now where he ranks Rosario. So, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. I mean, it's uh. He had some pretty far out ideas, and uh, 
but I mean, no, this, but, but like for example, do you think Rosario is that good, uh, or do they, you think that this all these the three boxers I just mentioned, Jared Hur, Jarek Williams, and Rosario, are, are maybe a little bit it's overrated? They're not impressive. Yeah, man. I mean, uh, let me put it to you this way: I don't think Rosario or Rosario. What's his real name, by the way? Is it Rosario or Rosario? Jason Rosario. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I don't see him being. I staying on top for too long. I don't think there's a there's a uh, big crocodile, uh, a lion in this division. I thought Jared Hurt might be able to do it because he's just. It's going to be very hard for anybody to keep him off. I mean, J Julian Williams showed that in order to beat Jared Hurt, you're going to have to weather the storm at some point, especially in the middle rounds, because it's easy to catch Jared Hurt. It's easy to snap his head back, but he just keeps coming and coming and coming and throwing lots of shots on the inside and the outside. Um, I would like to see Rosario versus versus um, Jared Hurd, but apparently there's an immediate rematch clause that Julian Williams says he will be enforcing. So, like I said, Julian Williams was winning that fight. He just started getting into a bit of an exchange, and and he got to he got overconfident, and that's how he got caught. It was a left hook that started the whole thing. Although I will say that he also got caught with a right hand as Earlier. soon as the yeah. first round, I believe, and he never seemed to. That's the thing, though. Butcher, you always talk about... Oh, somebody just donated. All right, I'm hearing two alerts, by the way. But shout out to Chris K, who just donated, aka Undercover Asian. He just donated with a super chat. He says, I regret skipping boxing for the McGregor farce. Oh, boy, you, you didn't watch this fight for that one? We'll talk about the McGregor thing, by the way, because that also involves boxing indirectly. Um... But what was it? Yeah, it's interesting how we talk about certain fights, fighters not having a chin. And I always get a little bit weary about talking about that because it's boxing. You get hit once, even if it's not a heavyweight fight, you can't, anybody can knock anybody out if the punch lands correctly. But you have to admit, there are some guys, Amir Khan, for example, it's true. Their chins, they just, they're not that good. I don't know if they got, they got stung and sparring and they never recovered. I don't know if it's because they just don't have that good a chin. Maybe their their neck is too thin. I don't know. But Julian, would it be safe, guys, to say that Julian Williams has a certified mediocre chin at this point? Well, he's been in three tough fights in his whole career and he's been knocked out in the fifth round in two of them. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, I think we can say that. I mean, Julian Williams seems to, has, he seems to have all the skills. Offensively, it's just defense defensively is terrible just 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 easy to hit and rosario is very technically very good with his shots as well he's loading up on his shots let's be real and he was telegraphing a lot of them but julian williams just did seem to struggle to get out of the way of them and they right. were landing and they were doing the damage I mean, like i said it was rosario looks like he could be quite a handful in that i mean when i when i look at that division i'm thinking who beats him and no i'm not, I'm not sure there's too many that can can beat him. To be honest with you, because he's he's technically quite sad. He has very very long arms, very freakishly long arms. He was, you know, first to the punch quite often in that one last night. And um, Julian Williams has just got, he's like I said, terrible chin, terrible defensively. And he, it's like I said, he was never going to reign in that division. He he had his good night at the office. Jared Heard, how good is Jared Heard? I don't know. I just what I, I, all I know is I saw a British bum that I'd never heard of. Yeah. Rock him to his boots. And I, I thought I knew a little bit about British boxing, but this time I didn't even know who that was. <laughs> who Jared Heard. Yeah. He, he had heard all over the place. So how good's heard? Don't know. I mean, that division is pretty poor to be honest. And Monkey is looking horrible recently. <laughs> um, yeah. He is, about that. He? He just, it's true. So that's I mean, what I was trying to... Liam yeah. Smith is what it is with him. I mean, who else is there really? I mean, the 154 division... I'm, Charlo, like I said, Charlo's not even looked great, and Charlo knocked J Rock out as well. So it is what it is. It is what it is. You know, uh, I. Me... You go ahead, Gonzalo. Go ahead. Brian Castano and maybe uh, Lara at 154, they're contenders. I thought that the, the shot that was doing real good for Jason Rosario was the uh, uppercut. I thought right. that was gold. And going back to uh, Heard, uh, that that was a good night for um, this kid. Uh, what's his name? Jeez, I just woke up. <laughs> that just um, that got knocked out. Julian Williams. 
He was right. getting hit in that in that fight. If it would have been a harder puncher, because 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 hers is more of a like uh, a, a power puncher, like like this guy on this night, mm-hmm. he could have possibly lost that fight too. So uh, you know he's a good fighter, uh, the Rock Williams, Julian Williams, but you know he doesn't have the greatest chin as you guys were saying. You're absolutely right, and that's to Stu's point too that. There just doesn't seem to be anybody that's going to dominate this division. I mean, listen, for a while, I thought it was going to be Jermel Charlo after his uh, brother left the division. I thought, man, this guy's the guy that's going to be, at some point, the number one. Then it seemed like it was going to be Jared Hurd because Jermel lost to to uh, Harrison. Then Charlo, last month, he beat Harrison, but he was on the way to losing a decision. He just didn't seem all that great. He was overstepping the, overshooting the runway, not setting up his shots properly. Finally, a good punch managed to drop Harrison at the end, and that's how it ended. Jared Hurd got beat Jared, Julian Williams. Julian Williams just got lost, just lost by knockout again. Then you have, I'm going to put the list up here on the screen, Patrick Teixeira from Brazil, who lost to Curtis Stevens by knockout, I believe. Then you got Erickson Lubin, who's been looking good, but again, he himself has been knocked out by Jermel Charlo. You got Michel Soro. He's pretty good, but I think he's... Starting to get old, I think. Or I think he's only about 30. Lubin's chinny. Lubin's, Lubin's going to sleep the minute someone with a bit of power lands on his chin. I'm telling right. you that now. I mean, that shot that Charlo hit him with, with barely grazed him. And he was fucking... Oh, he, was, he was in a coma for about fucking half an hour, weren't he? I don't know, man. It was ridiculous. But Lubin is like... It's another, he's like another J-Rock. Looks all, all right going forward, but land on the button. And it's night-night sort of thing. So, Terrible so did- division, really. This division is exciting. I, one could make an argument that this division is exciting because you you don't know what's going to happen. Anybody can beat anybody. So maybe all, that sense... this is the problem. This is it, Butcher. They're all as bad as each other in a way. <laughs> they've all got their well. They've all, they've all got their weaknesses. So I reckon if they all fought each other, like in round robins, they could all like twice. If they fought each other, they could each get a win each against each other. They're, you know, they're that evenly matched. I think if you if you kept fighting each other, yeah, could beat each other, sort of thing. I don't think but there's one that... guy that stands out. And what I do know from watching um, the last few fights at 154 is not one of them guys should go up to 160 because they'll get they'll get murdered mm. in that division. Oh yeah, That's absolutely. And you know what, Butch is right though. No, like, I was just gonna say this, this division could be regarded as exciting, but let me tell you, you're not gonna find a pound for pounder in this division. Mm-hmm, That's, exactly. That's my opinion, man. That's a great point. That's a great point. The, the, you know, to be pound for pound, you need to be consistent in which your wins and with your performances. And you, you, you hit the nail on the head there, Bucho. This is the UFC of the boxing world. It's they're all exchanging titles with knockout wins one after the other. There's no one person that looks dominant. Now, some people are saying Uncle Burnt to stop. <laughs> I think it's Uncle Burnt apostrophe. Fuck, this thing is cracking up. Um, I think it was Uncle Burnt. Yeah, Uncle Burnt apostrophe says time for Kel Brook to try and mop up. LOL. Listen, even Kel Brook. When he was talking about how he was going to face, uh, he wanted to fight Jared Hurd, I said, yo, man, he couldn't even keep Errol Spence off of him. How the hell is he going to keep Jared Hurd off of him? I mean, I'm pretty sure. I doubt Cal Brook. Cal Brook can't even be bothered to mop up the piss on his bathroom floor. Oh, Let's come on. Real, man. <laughs> give me a minute. Ain't, <laughs> he ain't fucking mopping nothing up, man. That guy <laughs> don't want it. Don't want to hear his name no more. Toss him in a boxing ring. That wow. was a pretty crude example, Stu. That was a very crude example. I expected better from you, but... Uh, wow, well, yeah. Well, the Cal Brook deserves a crude example right now. I mean, the fucking guy's just wasting his best. And you watch, this guy's going to come out with his skin. He's going to be about 40 years old. He's going to be about 100 and fucking... He's going to be about 175 pounds. He's going to be fighting all these Eastern European beasts and getting fucking put to sleep in a couple of rounds because he can't make the weight he should be fighting at anymore. He's going to be well past it, wasting all the best years of his career. You know, there's some good welterweight division. There's some big names from where he can make a lot of money. Don't want it, mate, does he? Chasing Amir Khan around like some lovesick fucking teenager. Embarrassed. Didn't he call out Spence Jr.? No. Oh. Okay. I thought I'd heard that, by the way. Yeah, yeah I thought, I thought I'd... I heard that yesterday or today. But anyways. Spent, uh, well, Brooke, man, he, I think sometimes he just sits at home, has a few beers. That's too many. <laughs> and goes, on, goes on Twitter and that gives it the big one. Then he wakes up in the morning and he don't fancy mm. it again. Oh, yeah. I'm not, not interested in that guy. He's like the I was guy a big that... fan of this guy. The, fan, the amount of stick I got from, from defending Kel, bro. I mean, I got fucking terrorized for it um, on the on the boxing voice. But you still get it. You still but get it. I'm defending this guy, and this guy let me down, man. Huh? Yeah, you, you're still getting it. Every once in a while, somebody will come into the into the comment section and go, is that Stu Little? 
I remember when he picked Kell Brook to beat Errol Spence, LOL. Like, they won't stop with it. Listen, that was, for me, that's, hey, listen, I was picking him before he, he, got, he got a fucking brainwave and decided to nearly get killed by Gennady Golovkin. I, when oh. I was picking him, I didn't think Golovkin was going to come into the picture and fucking fracture his cheekbone and, and destroy his confidence. I didn't know. And after that, you know, you don't know what you're getting. The guy's going down and um, he's got, he's half, he's half man, half machine, and he after fucking Golovkin's finished with him so you just don't know what man you're getting and so obviously it made it a bit for, for me i think if kel brook had stayed away from golovkin and just went and went in there and fought spence when he was his peak fitness and form i think he would have beat errol spence and i'll stick by that yeah really perhaps because he was, he was he was troubling spence he was he was winning that fight until he, he his tank empty and that tank went because let's be real he went he put on all that muscle to go up didn't he to fight golovkin and then to, to lose that sort of weight as well, and, and the confidence. You when when you lose when you got a zero, you lo you lose your first fight. A lot of confidence. A lot of people go they have a builder, don't they? They go and fight a few bums, get their confidence back up, then go in there. He's gone straight into the deep end for Errol Spence. He's right. had to lose all that weight. Um, his confidence low. He's got half. He's got fucking steel in his cheekbones. I mean, you know, or his eye socket, wherever it was. I mean, it was just you know, it was it was a tough one for him to win that night. So yeah. Look, but anybody still that, give me for it. anybody that tells you that they knew for a fact that uh, J uh, Errol Spence was gonna stop K uh, Kell Brook, they're not being honest with you. Nobody. I mean, it was a hard fight to pick. It was a pick and fight at that point. But where uh, since then, he got that win against Michael Zarafa, which a lot of people thought he lost. But Michael Zarafa is not necessarily like a bad fighter either. So he's got two wins, and then he's fighting. This American guy from Massachusetts, on here, uh, it's already scheduled. It's going to be in England. Sarafa, who did Sarafa just beat recently? Well, he, he beat, beat Jeff Horn. Yeah. Jeff Horn beat him in a rematch. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Well, see, yeah, he's not a bad fight. People were making fun of Sarafa because he used to be a male stripper or something. They were calling him Magic <laughs> Ma Magic Sarafa. They were told, yeah. See, anonymous in the chat room says Sarafa is trash. I don't think you've seen a trash fighter in your life, man. Because I mean, to call Sarafa trash, that's that's. Oh, he was a male stripper in a gay club or like a sh just regular heterosexual club. Uh, that's. I'm gonna have to check that out, man. I'm not sure. Hopefully the the latter and not the former. Not that you I see, have with anything. That Brooks, with that with that Cal Brook thing, when he beat Sean Porter, that was a good win. Confidence died. Good, he was in good form, peak of his fitness. He should have gone in there, gone, gone and fought the best straight away. Should gone, should gone after um, Spence and Crawford and all them other guys, whoever it was that was around at the time. Even Pacquiao could have gone after them big fights while he was. But he, he went out. He, you know, he took these ridiculous mandatories that meant nothing, like JoJo Dan and Bizier. I mean, it just. It's sort of like he got stuck in a, a fighting bum gear sort of thing, a gear to fight bums. And then, hmm. like I said, then, then when he did have to raise it up, he was in there against Golovkin. Right. You know? And then he won his wife. When, he, when he beat Sean Porter, because I, I always thought Sean Porter was really good and dangerous. Yeah. I was it's impressed. I, yeah, I me mean, too. I, I thought the guy, you know, like deserved to be mentioned as like, man, you might be dealing with a top 10 Pound for pound fighter, you know, oh, it's yeah. like he has that. If kind he of stayed in the recognize, if he stayed in the gym, right, and kept kept in that sort of shape, kept on that form with, you know, after that after that big win against Port in America, mate, he could have gone gone on and give anyone a good fight, but he just he he went stale because he's wasting his his best years of his career, his best form on fighting JoJo Dan, Frankie Gavin, Bizier. I mean, it's fucking embarrassing, isn't it? Who's he fought since Sean Port? I mean, he's fought two good guys. Don't get me wrong, but who's he beat? Sorry. I mean, got got destroyed in both of them. Yeah. And, Gil Brook you know, actually started training and took this seriously. Could he be a force to be reckoned with at 154? Yes, but he has to, you know, he has to keep away from the, the clubs and, and, and the fucking cocaine and everything else that he does. And, <laughs> yeah, cocaine, he, man. Like, he might listen, be a little mate, bit of what, a you, what, you don't think Kel Brook's on the... You don't think Kel Brook's doing coke? Come on, now. What do you think he got oh. stabbed for? And uh, <laughs> he was all coked. Up. He got all coked. He was all coked up that night. He got stabbed. <laughs> so, um, that's, that's, yeah, probably. Look how he true. blows up, man. He, I mean, you, you, people give Javante Davis stick for blowing up. Uh, uh, Kel Brooks even worse. Look at him, man. So, um, if he can stay focused, stay sharp, yeah, I, f I think it could be dangerous for anyone because you know you, you don't lose your talent. It's just boxing's not not just about talent. It's about 
all sorts of things, and he's, the other things are just not cutting it for me right now. You know, his you would think he's much different. older, but he's only thirty three years old, so he's just like one year older than Terence Crawford. And there same you age, go, same age That's as most true. of these guys. He's not that old. He might be a little bit of damaged goods, though. The fight yeah. that yeah. that that, that kind of like fucked him up was the Golovkin fight. The reason why he yeah, took the Golovkin fight because oh, yeah. it was money, and he was he was strong and confident. Now, after that fight. You might be dealing with somebody who psychologically is fractured and because he doesn't truly Oh, believe he is, mate. Himself. Listen, he left his trainer and he got this fucking guy. I don't know. He must have just walked out the first pub in Sheffield. He, he went past. And he must have just got in there, see a guy, see a guy pissed up with, on a stool or something, asked him to train him because this guy was an absolute <laughs> fucking clown. I don't know where they found him. He, and Cal Brook was um, terrible that night. So, um, and then we just haven't seen him since. It's just like, by the way, recognize that. I, I don't think I don't think he wants it. Like I said, I think that that beating he took off Golovkin uh, mentally destroyed him, and that can do that to you. I mean, Jeff Lacey, Jeff Lacey was never the same after that beating against Kawasaki. A good beating can actually um, it does it can do that to a fighter, and I think that's what he's done to Cal. But I just yeah. don't. I think that he's he's quite happy to get in there with Amir Khan because all he he knows all he's got to do is land on the button, his job done. But when he's in there with someone like Golovkin who will eat his shots all night and El Spence who's who's gonna trade with him and, and, and be just as strong as him, you know, yeah. it, it, he don't want it. That's what. Let's yeah, be real. Did he ever call? And has he, he ever really up called that fight? Right, Stu. He showed up. Yeah, he was doing really well. It's just the the the, cool. the demons came back, you know, and he took a knee. He he turned. Yeah, he turned his his face. Yeah, the thing is, I like, reckon I said he was a confident fighter when he went into the ring against Golovkin. He, he he probably thought he could win, but after the the ass whooping he took, that took all that confidence away from it. And when you're not when your confidence goes in a boxing ring, you you, you might as well just call it a day. Um, I wanted to ask, recognize, did you see the fight last night between Williams and Rosario? Yeah, I definitely did. Remember last night when we were. Finishing up second renaissance, we said, "Hey, Julian Williams sort of looks like the guy that could uh, get upset with a single punch or something." Yeah, yeah, he could. Hold on one second. It's my daughter, <laughs> her friend. Um, no, recognize us. He's gonna, he's gonna right. watch it. Going on? Sorry he's, about that. Um, he's watching out to see if his daughter isn't a secret lesbian or something. <laughs> no, 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 no. They would, you know how teenagers are. Anyway, so um, Julian Williams. Yeah, I just thought I always thought that Julian Williams was a guy who was not protected by the PBC. You got to be careful with these unknown fighters that mm. you know are growing. Remember, you know Rosario going in lost only one fight. That was to Gallimore, I believe. Yeah, it was mm. Gallimore. He got knocked out by him or TKO'd, and he was really young when that happened. That that's the stage where guys become better fighters because when that happened to Rosario, he was 21 years old, and now at 24, you better believe he learned from that. And look what happened. He goes in there. You know, one thing he said, his trainer said that um that they had a, a 16 week training camp, 16 weeks, I believe it was. So this guy was fully prepared. And at an age where he's growing as a fighter, and he went in there and he beat the living, like he beat Julian Williams up, like he knew, like he knew he could beat him, like there was no doubt in his mind. He was throwing them yeah. shots like a, he was throwing them shots like a prime Gerald McKellen, man. Fucking yeah. mean intentions, man. Mean and did intentions. You, did, and did you, did you like, didn't you notice going into the fight? And this is one of the reasons why I said, you know, he, he's one of those kind of guys that could pull off the upset. I didn't say he was going to do it. I'm just saying you got to watch out for guys like that. Mm -hmm. um, just look at his demeanor at the at the um, the lead up to the fight, like when when uh, J Rock would come up to him and look at him real hard, and he would smile at him. Look, I know about smiling, man. I I used to like doing that as a as, as somebody. It's a it's a thing of like we're trying to bait you because we we think we know exactly what it takes. So we turn that smile. For, okay, so we smile, and once we hurt you, then we start giving you that mean look. And you're fucked up in the head. You're like, oh, shit, I thought this dude was a clown. No, he's not a clown. He just feels he got your number. And you got to see through that. You got to kind of like see through yeah. what he was I mean, doing. And I don't, I don't think, think, think J-Rock understood what he was getting himself into. 
And it's <laughs> fucked up because I like J Rock. You know? Yeah, but let's be I real. Like Fuck it out. Let's be real. He should be in the next fucking Save the Last Dance after that. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, no. yeah. I mean, listen, he's... Fucking hell, man. He was all over the place, and this he, is the problem. Yeah. This is the problem with Jay Rock. He's a bit like Khan, I think. I think he's I'm a bit like Amir Khan. For him, but he underestimated Rosario. Yeah. I think he's yeah, a bit like Amir Khan. He, he's the sort of guy we could be dominating the whole fight and just get caught on the button, and, and that's all she wrote. But, but also, so, those punches were hurting because as soon as he got touched early in the fight, it ended in the fifth, but like in the mm -hmm. by the second round... His cheekbones were already swelling up. Yeah, he, started, he looked like Andre, Andre Berto did against um, Guerrero. Yeah, he was turning Asian in that fight. And it's interesting. <laughs> I, it's interesting what Recognize mentioned about that the guy had a 16 or 15 week training camp. I didn't know that, but it's true. Once you actually look at uh, the de everybody's saying it too in the chat room too that the, the demeanor he had. Because one thing that impressed me was first of all he was walking forward with his hands up. And also, there was a point where he caught Julian Williams with a counter right in the first round. Yeah. And you could tell that Julian Williams was shook up. Meanwhile, I think it was in the second or third round, Julian Williams hit him with a massive right hand. And yeah. he just rolled with the shot and came back with a couple of jabs. He was ready. Yeah, like you could tell he'd been he'd been hit like that. He, way he was in inspired. tremendous. He was in tremendous shape. He looked really strong, yeah. very methodical. And like I said, he looked like he could just walk through. Um, J Rock's punches all night. He felt and that's that's the game plan he had, sort of thing. I'll walk through his punches to get my own off because he's not going to do much damage. And that that that's looked like that was looked like what he was doing. But you know, he's he's going to be handful for for anyone in that division. I don't see anyone, you know, dominating this guy in a hurry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. This I mean, guy. The, the yeah, it's one thing to throw one hard punch, and 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 Julian Williams did that. But to continue throwing the same salvos with with that power is something else. And on the other yeah. hand, this guy in Jason Rosario was punching hard with both hands. So I he think was. that, that punch that Williams threw like in the third round was more of a punch yeah. of like, get off me because I'm feeling the pressure. But the other guy yeah. was really, really punching hard with both hands. See, the thing the about thing Jason, Jason, you could tell that he put in the, the work because he said, you know, his trainer said that they trained for like 15 to 16 weeks. He was, he, he, he was just overwhelming. Like, look, Julian yeah. Williams was doing some good things. He, he, in the beginning, he was, you know, he was throwing. He was hitting him with combination shots. He was following. He was following up with the with the jab. You know, Williams has a decent jab. He he, he does have a decent jab. It's just that the kid kept putting pressure on him, and so it's like, okay, you you got me with that. I'm gonna get you with this. You know, yeah. and I think I think he's one of them fighters. You get you get certain fighters that take three or four rounds to to actually warm up and get into gear. They have a look and they let you feel. They, 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 Get this, and their opponents don't feel in like a lull, like sort of thing, where they think they're winning the fight or dominating them. And before you know it, they up the gears and um, part the pressure on. And I think he's one of them guys. So he just seemed to just have a look, didn't really get going properly. But once he started getting, you know, once he got going, sort of thing, I thought um, J Rock would, was in all sorts of trouble. Even if he hadn't got caught in the fifth, I think it was a matter of time before Zaria got to him. I just think it was just too strong. I think. J Rock was struggling to get out of the way of the shots. That, that was a problem. He just, just doesn't seem to get out of the way of the punches. It's very easy to hit. And I think that was his problem. And I think this guy, because this guy was technically quite sound with his, his, his punches. I mean, he had, he had every shot in the book, sort of thing. His left hook was quite dangerous as well. I mean, he was throwing that with real bad intentions. I don't think, you know, that could have took his head off a few of them he landed. He just missed with. So, yeah, the yeah guy, he was the displaying guys, a great uppercut too. Yeah, he was. That uppercut was very nice as well. You know, just a real nice arsenal. And I just think J-Rock would have uh, ended up um, getting stopped anyway. I just don't think... Yeah, he looked... He look, I mean, look at the look at the uh, the amount of uh, uh, facial damage. Not that he had a ton, but look at just yeah. the five rounds. Kid, yeah, kid was that's strong, right. man. He was just, he was just in... Uh, and he, but the thing and is, he's getting stronger. Rock, man. Listen, let me just yeah. say this. I feel bad... He's getting stronger. Because he's Sorry, actually dude. a nice person. Talking to him, um, I think it was uh, Cam who had him uh, had him on his channel doing an interview, and he was a cool, humble person. I just think that he underestimated the temperature of the kid uh, mm -hmm. of of Rosario. You know, not so much his skills, what he can bring mentally yeah. to the to the to the I'm game. Not, I don't think it's that yeah. I recognize. I just don't. I don't think he could ever beat Rosario, no matter what mindset he was in, no matter what camp. Like I said, Rosario was getting stronger in there as the rounds were going. I was getting, yeah. 
Yeah. Which is the style of a guy who's weak. Yeah. You know, uh, this will guys. only build his confidence because he's 24, and that fight that you're talking about, recognize, you know, it's a learning experience. And the guys from Dominican Republic, I'm glad, you know, he won this fight. Why can? Why is there a lot of great baseball players, but like maybe in boxing there isn't. Now maybe moving forward, he can move into a gym where he can get better sparring, and he can, re he can retain those titles. Yeah, that's but, true. But, you know what? You know what's funny to say that um, on Gonzalo is that uh, if you see Dominican fighters. And they bring them into the U.S. market, like they kind of like. That means that they they they're battle tested. A lot of the Dominicans they, they they'll start off in the Dominican Republic, go to Puerto Rico, and if they do really good there in those two places, then they start taking them to Mexico, and then from Mexico they bring them to the U.S. If they do good, so there's not well, a lot. Well, of how did how did Delvin how did Delvin, how did Delvin Rodriguez get over here? Then? Hold up, hold did, on, let me just say this one point. Let me he's say, fucking useless. The, the one Dominicans, the Dominicans that do come from the U.S., that come to the U.S., and you see them kind of like, you know, like they, they push them into a big fight. Not that there's a lot of Dominicans that come out of, uh, that, there's not a lot of good boxers that come out of DR, but the ones that do are battle tested. Those guys are, are, are battle tested. They, that means they, they put them through the, uh, through the ringer and kind of like say, all right, you ready. That's the one good thing I would say about Dominican boxing that I do like. That's yeah. been really poor. Let's, let's let's keep it real. Been very poor recently. They've not. Oh really yeah, it's always anything. been. It's I mean, like I said, Delvin Rodriguez. I mean, I, I don't know how he <laughs> right, got. Right, right. I, I, I don't know how he got into America. He should have stayed where he from. He should have stayed in the Dominican Republic. But I do like their program. Dreadful. It just hasn't produced. It hasn't yeah. really produced that that great. But this you guy, this guy looks like he. Uh, for me, it's going to be. Um, a tough fight for anyone in that division, and like Listen, it just shows you he, that J Rock had a good night against uh, Jared Hurd, but just just prove Jared Hurd just doesn't punch very hard. And like I said, look how many times he has he has to wear people down. He has to throw a lot of punches to do it as well. He's not sparking you out with one shot. This guy just, and for for him not to hurt J Rock um, enough to you know get him in bad trouble, even stop him, just shows you that Jared Hurd's not a big puncher because the minute Charlo lands. All sorts of things happen. The minute um, Rosario lands, well, we saw what happened last night. So, for me, that division's pretty. Weird. That's why Liam Smith's given given them all a good fight. You know, and this guy's he's not not very good. Well, he's all right, Liam Smith, but he's nothing to crow about, is he? And he's given these good guys good fights. Uh, it's just Here's a poor thing, division man. for me. Here's really the is. thing. Here's the thing. With people saying Rosario is gonna, he's a good fighter. And uh, he certainly seems like he's going to be ha hard to handle. But this is the 154-pound division. There's a lot of good names. Everybody seems to be getting the best out of somebody and then immediately losing afterwards. I think, Rosario, first of all, the, the reason I don't think Rosario is going to hang on to his title that long is because A, Julian Williams was beating him. B, he was crying after the win. I mean, what type of fighter cries? What a pussy. My pussy hurts. No, 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 no. You're not I would, And by the way, I, I'd say that to his face. No crying in boxing? No crying in boxing. That's right. And I'd say that to his face, by the way. Oye, caballero, porque tú estás llorando. Or, recognize, what's the uh, Dominican accent Like there? that, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oye, caballero, porque tú estás llorando así. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, he he reminded me of Buscatewi, BDA. Yeah, he's a That's bit a like that. Yeah. yeah, he's very similar to that, but I, I think he's a technically a bit better than um, Buscatewi. I'm, yeah. um, uh, I'm talking about character. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, right, yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. But you yeah. know what? No, but okay. you were stylistically like the, the other guys. Yeah, stylistically, not far wrong either. Yeah. But uh, like, you know yeah, what? Okay. I, I wanted to let me just say something real quick, guys. If, don't forget uh, in the in the chat room if you want to donate and you want us to take international calls, that would certainly help us to boost that program. I believe we can do it. I think we. Would you just correct me if I'm wrong, real quick? We can take international calls, right? But it's just gonna take. Uh... No, we'll get Butcher later on. Also, I wanted to ask you guys. A question here um, to the no, people in the so... chat room. <laughs> All right, to the yeah, people. So in the... Was think, sorry, I was muted. I was talking. It was muted the whole time. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, more donations will certainly help. And hit that like button, please. That's Just, right. Uh, yeah. Also, I wanted to ask the people in the chat room. Let us know who you think is the king of the 154 pound division. And I wanted to ask you guys in the panel here on the on the Discord. Somebody said in the chat room that it might have been. The reason behind Julian Williams' downfall last night was maybe because of the fact that he had a bit of a layoff after the Jared Hurd fight. What do you guys think about that? 
Yeah. Yeah, uh, like, yeah. Jared Hurd should be shooting himself for, for not taking that rematch. Jared Hurd didn't want the rematch. He turned it down. I mean, that's... T- how you don't give how it, bad you lose your belt. Up. Huh? That's how bad he was beat up in that fight. That, that's what I'm saying. Jared Hurd, right? He lost his belt. What what champion does that? Look, tell me you like about Anthony Joshua. I keep hearing about he's this and he's that. But the first thing he does is he gets gets destroyed in a fight. The first thing he does is go in there for the rematch. That's a brave warrior, mate. What does Jared Hurd do? Turns his chance down against J-Rock Williams. I mean, that just shows you where we are in, in, in boxing in some of these divisions. These guys don't want it. They want easy fights. They, he was quite happy to get in there against the British bum that night, weren't he? And, oh, yeah. You know, he was happy to get in there that night. But like I said, um, embarrassing. The division is useless. Let's be real. Harrison's useless. They're all useless. And, and look, Mungia is another one. I tell you what, I'm picking Rosario to 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 beat Mungia. I think Rosario beats Mungia quite. That would be a nice fight. Yeah, it would be a good fight. To be honest, that would be a good fight. I don't know who would win, but I I, I would give Rosario a good chance. Mungia is too wide, mate. Mungia is too wide. Yeah, for that he guy. is that fucking guy would, wide, man. That guy yeah, would but... piece Mungia up, man. I'm telling you. I just I just think he has a better chin than Charlo, though. But that's the he thing. Would, he, yeah. He's going to have to. He's going to take. He's going to have to take um, Rosario's tank from him, and I, that's going to be a difficult task. By the look, the shape he was in against uh, J Rock. But um, that's, yeah, I think. Yeah. I think if they go, I just think Rosario's just a bit sharper with his punches and technically more sound. Um, Mungi is fucking very. He's very wild, isn't he? Very wide with his shots, and he's he's fucking square on with his chin in the air and all sorts. He's of stuff, just right? missing. He's just missing yeah. a couple of stuff, man. And it, yeah. and it, he looks you like can, you but can he's, tell. Not, he's, he's not picking up on him though. Um, no, he, he doesn't. He's not getting. Does, he's getting he worse. Like Every time I see him better? fight, he's getting worse. Doesn't he look like he should be better than what he is? He's getting worse. Yeah, he's like progressing. Like, what the he fuck? Is, he's supposed it, to be getting better. He's, like, he's at an age where he should be growing every fight. And, you know, there's it. talks about him fighting fucking Triple G. I don't even... Look, oh, Triple G's getting older. Triple G's getting older. And I don't want to... Triple like, G will murder Mungia. That's what I'm starting... Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like, you know, I was thinking maybe Mungia will be strong enough to, like, hang in there nah, and put some damage, but maybe not, man. He, he, he's not, he, he might be he's strong not gonna enough, but just too wide open. He's not going to take that punishment from Golovkin. And let's be real. Go and watch Liam Smith v. Mungia. Now swap... Liam Smith with Gol- Golovkin landing those shots. <laughs> it's going to be a, it's going to be a terrible night for Mungia, and I and I don't want Mungia to take that fight. He's too young for that. I I don't want to see him get mentally destroyed and, and beat to a pulp. I, I want to see him. He's got so much to work on. He needs to stay away from Canelo, um, Golovkin, all them sort of guys. Oh, on on Mexican on Mexican TV, they're talking about Canelo against Mungia. Oh, come on, Canelo yeah. beats yeah. Mungia. Canelo. Yeah, man. I think I think he beats him pretty easy. You know, Mungia had problems with two guys. He had a problem with Hogan, who was moving a lot, and he had a problem with Inoue, who was just barging forward and very strong. <laughs> I want to see I want to see Mungia fight, because this is the thing. Mungia, you put him in there against guys like Liam Smith and O'Sullivan. Don't get me wrong. They're good fighters, but he's stronger than them, hits harder than them. So if you just block shots in front yeah. of him, he's going to piece you up. But I want to see him fight somebody that can crack and box at the, a little bit at the same time. You know, that's not a good sign, BDA. When you've got a guy who, who could... Who can who can get pieced up? I'm, when I mean pieced up, meaning he could get hit a lot um, by guys on the back foot and the front foot. That usually means you're doing something really bad. And I haven't really checked. I really haven't really focused on on Mongia uh, on his skills, other than than sometimes he could be real reckless. That's it. But there's got to be something wrong with the footwork. There's got to be something wrong with his. Uh, you know what kind of angles he's coming in? Is it just like just fucking straight line with nothing? Because a guy on the back foot and on the front foot, two different guys beating you up at, at, at times, that means you're doing something horrible. You know what? It's I can tell he did improve a little, a little bit. A he little. Did try, at least to try to move his head. One thing that did impress me was his jab and the ability to like uh, retain a good gas tank in the final rounds, but that maybe had a lot to do with the, uh, the uh, position he was facing. But, but think about, think about so, his recklessness and he's still winning fights, though. So that means the talent's there. Means he's good. Yeah, but but that's grit and determination. That is and toughness. It's a bit like Carl Froch. When you see the 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 technical ability of Carl Froch, you wonder how he wins world titles. But then when you put in the his toughness, the chin he's got, um, he does the bait. He's got this 
basics. He does the basics quite well. He's got a nice jab and a nice straight right hand, and um, he's a big puncher. And when you've got all that, when you've got them sort of attributes, when you're lacking in the skill department, it can still get you through. I mean, this is this. How many fights do you watch with Carl Froch where he's getting outboxed, but his his will and determination gets him through, and his his, his heart and you know, look at George Gross, the one fight. He was getting he was getting spattered. But fucking that's that's mental toughness that got him through that. That's not skills and ability. And then you look at Durrell, who has all Andre Durrell, who has all the skills in the world, but he's got no heart. I mean, the fucking yeah. Tin Man's got a bit bigger heart than him. Mm -hmm. It's true, man. I mean, it's so, you. I mean, Mungia needs the full package, mate, to be a champion. Exactly. That's yeah. why Julian Williams. This guy looks like the complete package. He everything he throws is straight down the line. He's got quick hands, good movement, good instincts, angles. But that that got Darren Chin of his is just doesn't hold up against these guys now. For Munguia, there is an uh, an upside here. The guy, like Gonzalo said, he seems to be improving a little bit. He he did bring Eric Morales into his corner. He's trying to work on his defense, rolling more with the shots. He's only 22 or 23, I believe. So he's got an upside. I mean, let's just wait and see what he can do. But I want to see him fight a guy that's a puncher, a guy that's going to really... Because it, it's easy to take... Sh well, not easy, but if you get a good chin and you're a monster like Munguia, you can take shots from O'Sullivan and Liam Smith and you can walk those guys down. But what if you're fighting a sharpshooter, somebody like a Rosario, even if it's he's now at 160, Munguia, even if he faces some of the top punchers at 154, they're going to be able to hurt him. So I want to see why, what happens. That's why, yeah, that's why I think Rosario wins. I think because he's a sharpshooter, he's going to be a lot sharper to the punch. You know, just technically a lot better and it, just as tough by the looks of it. So that's mm -hmm. why I pick Rosario on that. By the way, I see we got Johnny Boy just dropped in. Johnny Boy, you there? What's up, boys? How you doing? Good, good. Good to have you on board, man. Um, we're just talking about the Rosario thing here, uh, the upset against Julian Williams. What did you think about that? Uh, what did I think about it? It was, it, it was a, uh, I'm happy for the kid. God bless him. Uh, another uh, overrated uh, PBC guy gets the fucking shaft, so that always <laughs> makes Johnny happy. Oh, come on. Uh, eh. Well, it's true, BDA. Any, I know, but any... I gotta play. I gotta play the the devil's advocate here and and be the nice guy. <laughs> well, well, yeah. well, hey, any any fucking any 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 PBC fighter that they build up, I just want to see him lose. So it's okay. Anybody that works for Floyd, I want to see him lose. So it makes me happy. The fucking belts are skipping from one guy to the next guy and the next guy and the next guy, and they all suck. Yeah, but oh. Julian Williams is like recognized. Said the guy, he's a good dude. I mean, he was on the on Cam Cameron interviewed him, I think last year. And uh, he no, I like, like J Rock. I was just, I was just, I like her too. I like, yeah, man, they all cool. I'm just except the Charles though. Just, no, 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 fuck that. There you go. Oh, hey, hey, oh, so so check this out, man, real quickly. I I don't mean to, uh, but uh, so I guess this Bruce Vane kid wants to wants to squabble. He got my phone number. I gave him my phone number. I said, "What's up with it, bro?" So I'll, I'll, I'll make sure. I'm, I'll make sure to record that if he actually drives out here like he's talking about, bro. Wait, 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 wait! You gotta beat the shit out of somebody. You gotta tell us what happened. Yeah, you gotta tell us what happened, man. You can't just leave. It I don't hanging. know. I don't know. I used to be tight with him, bro, and then motherfuckers was just saying he was talking shit. So I went and looked on his channel, and it was a it was a bunch of blabber about me. Which so video? I said, I, Which video? No, it was on his community thing. Oh, and I was like. Uh, and I was like, w I was like, well, what's up then with it, bro? What's up with it, Doug? You know, you got a fucking problem or what? And so I guess he gonna come out here and we're gonna squabble. We gonna what did he say? What did he say? We need to know what he said. Uh, it was, it's, uh, man. He left like three paragraphs talking shit about me. I don't know what the what fuck. What the fuck? Yeah, I said, come on, get it, bro. You want to squab, bro? It don't matter well, to we're me. We're gonna drive to Ch Chicago and film this. Oh wait a minute, he's not in Chicago. He's in. Uh... Johnny Boy's Milwaukee. in Milwaukee, I believe, right? Yeah, uh, it's like the next. Well, next he's still got to go through the Chicago to get here. Well, who's going to pay for over that? It's all right. I'm gonna, he's going to get buried in the fucking cornfield after he does the travel. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> Spol like Spolatro and his brother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hey, trying to look. Are this you story. talking about. Are you talking about. Sure, sure. Fucking vein. That, that dude? <laughs> yeah, yeah, recognize. Okay. Uh, that dude is a clown. I, ain't really I was it. like, "Come on out here, bro. What's it, you know, what's, what's up with it?" You, you're you're talking about you talking about the the walking contradiction. The guy that says it's an yeah, open yeah. secret that that Pacquiao is a yeah, steroid. Yeah, yeah. You mean uh, what about Floyd, buddy? 
Floyd? Yeah. You know? I, I, uh, I, I, uh, everybody's a cheater. Then you will use steroids, but not his idol. Right. <laughs> Anthony right. Joshua, who looks like the prototype of steroids. <laughs> Right, that dude is a clown. He's a clown. Get I, out I know, here. bro. I know, bro. I was like, well, come out here then. Come on, get it, bro. He wanted. He's like, man, I'm in with you, Johnny boy. And I was like, what's up, bitch ass nigga? I said, here's my phone number. You really got a fucking problem. What's up? I'm trying <laughs> to Fuck. find. I'm trying to find this exact uh, quote or, or, or paragraph that you say that he's talking about you. Which one is it? It's the first one up there, BDA. It's the first. Unless he deleted it. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. So it says, let me put it up on the screen there so everybody knows what's going on here. Eres mi perla, Johnny. In Spanish, that means you're my dog, or my bitch, rather. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. I know what it means. And so he's saying, first off, trick. I never said Errol Spence beat Sean Porter, dumbass. Check my shit. Check my shit. And you can't fuck with me on no type of level. Keep running your mouth and find out what's really good with me. I will choke nicotine juice out of your nose, boy. Address Address me like a man next time, hookah. Do not whisper my name in gossip like a little bitch, even if you are the son of one. Oh, that's very uncouth of him. What? Yeah, I don't know. I've seen him with so many Look what I right said there. back to him. Look what I said back oh. to him, BDA. Read Hold on. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to load the comments. All right, so same Brit got into it, too. He says, Bruce, this post is cringe as fuck. You're a grown man. <laughs> Johnny Boy says, whoa, Bruce, I never had a bad word to say about you. And literally all I said was that I didn't know about what the, what the smack talk was about. Then I, that I heard you through the grapevine because I never had any bullshit to say about you. But if that's how you feel, bro, that's how you feel. Hey, Johnny Boy, that's actually a pretty calm reply from you. <laughs> that's I'm actually surprised. pretty tame. Yeah. Well, keep, 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 keep reading. Keep, 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 keep reading. Keep reading. Uh, okay, so Bruce Vane says, Johnny Boy, I didn't start it. You did. No, no, no. My comment. My comment. I just read it. Whoa, no, Bruce there's and... more to it. Oh, okay, okay, okay you're right. Yeah, okay, more. sorry, sorry. Take it. That being said, um, he's yo Johnny Boy screaming at me more than he's screaming at Bruce Wayne. Okay, that being <laughs> said, <laughs> that being said, Johnny Boy continued saying, "I'm not one of those." Oh, okay. <laughs> I talk. I talk too soon. <laughs> that be, shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not one of these other. I can't say the word, otherwise we get shut down. But f s m motherfuckers on YouTube. I've been there, but I'm about it, bro. I've been there. I'm about that, bro. So if you get an issue, what's up with it, ho? Vete la mierda which means go to, <laughs> go to shit. So we can shake hands and squash it, or we can have a problem. I'm fine either way. Johnny, boy, you just got out of the fucking uh, doing a little time, man. I mean, I don't think you need to go around starting internet. Yeah, but what's, what's the problem with uh, Bruce Vane, man? This is the problem with a lot of these bro, channels. Hang, hang, on, hang, hang on, hang on. Nah, nah, one but this is, the, this is the thing, bro. This is the thing. I don't know where this even came from, bro. I don't even know where this came from. I'm like, Did you okay. mentioned his name. Because they listen to our... Sh listen, you know what it is? I'm going to tell you what it is, boy. There's people who sneak watch your videos or come to BDA, and they be like, yo, this dude, Johnny boy, you be talking shit. Look, I've been on BDA. I've been on, on, on some LDBC channels just to get a good laugh once in a while. I see them bring you up, bro. I, I, huh. I've seen it with my own eyes. I've seen the comments. They bring you up. So they do the same thing. To this this dude who thinks he's somebody, Bruce Vane. If you listen to him talk, and and and, and some of the I'm sub to him, honestly. Just to, at this point, it's just to like get a laugh because I I, I want to debate that kid so I could destroy him. I, I'm not interested in fighting unless he's willing to come to New York and like commit suicide. That's, that's about it. But, but I want to debate him because he's an easy win. That's a this dude thinks he's somebody. He's a clown. And by the way, like, he made his channel basically dissing Wilder. That's all he did. That's all yeah, he but that's, that's, about. That, that's what it is. That's what it is with this guy, right? I, I was subscribed to him for a while. I just got bored of seeing the same old titles. To yeah. Him fucking sucking on AJ's nuts. And, yeah, and, and I like AJ. And, call, and, and, and calling Wilder. Every, no, I, don't even, I, don't, I don't like Deontay Wilder, but when it gets a bit tedious when everything's about him and running him down and he made him a bit of a name he was quite excited at first but then he started to a lot of these channels you see it they start to believe their own hype after a while the channel starts to grow and they start to think they're something they're not and, and all of a sudden they're offering you for fights and car parks and stuff i mean someone <laughs> i got i got i got a comment where someone said they, if they ever saw me in london um they'd splash, they'd i saw that i saw that yeah 
<laughs> yeah, they slash my face, but that's funny because they've never seen me. How are they going to know who I am? Who gets... Oh, there's a, there's a white guy. There's a white guy. I'm going to slash him. That might be Stuart Little. Get out of here, you fucking plank. You know what? It's interesting. Bro, it's, it, it, I'm like, I, bro, like, like I say, I'm not a pussy, bro. Like, if you, if you, if you come at me like that, then what's up, bro? I, you know, like, this is what you, do. you know what, Johnny? This is what you do. This is what I, Johnny. I know you. I know you. I know you definitely get down. And I know you know you from shit. You from Chicago. You had to probably. So okay. let me let me give you a little advice. This is what I tell anybody. Okay. Okay. And I mean this shit. I tell them all. I say, look, if it's that much of a problem, if you, if I'm, I live in New York. If you want to come out here, that's fine. You can come out here. Understand that when you come out here, you find out who I am. Two things are gonna happen. You either gonna walk away. Oh, you gonna mean business, and I'm gonna kill you. Wait, that's it, bro. Okay, yeah, okay, that means you yeah, went out of your way to find out who I am. Okay, <laughs> and so at that point, once you come up to me, I'm gonna destroy you. I'm not. I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about the consequences. I'm not worried about anything, because it's obviously you, you needed to do this. You needed to come see me, and you in the right. That means that you can't get arrested. Right? So if this dude finds you in Chicago, <sighs> near Milwaukee, Johnny yeah. Boy, I, you have every right to whip the stink out of anybody and not even <laughs> worry about it. Be like, hey, he, he came over here looking for me. When, yeah. when, you come looking, hey, when you come looking for recognized, mate, you, you, you come into the Kumatai. You can get killed. In the <laughs> <laughs> you come into the Kumatai, bro. Hey, you know what you, I told you to? You'll get, you'll, get some chung, you'll get some Chung Lee shit, man. Where he's from. <laughs> so, I, mean, I always tell them. Beat me on 40 you seconds. Recognize the stamp on your head and take your fucking headband or your bandana, man. Trust me. I, I mean, like, bro, I, this is the thing, though, bro. I'm not even looking for a fight, bro. This shit came out of nowhere. I'm like, well, if it's like that, what's up, bro? Come out here. I'm in Milwaukee. What's up, bro? It's oh, bad. Milwaukee. Excuse me. If you we, come to Milwaukee, we, then... Oh, well, yeah, we can, we can do it in Illinois, too. It don't matter to me. It don't matter to me. Either way. I got wolves all around me. It's all good. <laughs> Shit. I reckon, hey, I re you know, there's going to be there's a lot of YouTube um, boxing um, going to be happening um, in the future. I'd like to see as a celebrity YouTube fight Johnny Boy versus 78 so Sports TV. He's oh. from Milwaukee, isn't he? So, what is it? Two yeah, Milwaukee but... guys. Yeah, well, how old? Uh, that's where he's from. I thought he was, for some reason, I thought that kid was from Brooklyn or some shit like nah, that. Fuck nah, he's from Milwaukee. That's why, that's why he. And you see, it's, we live in the same fucking town, bro, and I badmouth that motherfucker all the time. And you do, did anything, yeah. Did, it, did anything happen? <laughs> He's on the chat right now. Yeah, yeah but I don't know There's... if that's the real um, Butcher uh, Kitchen check. check. Oh. Yeah, check. Bruce Wayne. But you know uh, what? It's a fake. It's a fake? All right, yeah. So yeah. I knew that. But okay, I just want to continue on because I'm interested in how it started because there's another, he replied to you reply, Johnny Boy, and it didn't don't let me reply to him after that. He was not, bro. Listen, hang on before you go on, BD. Okay, okay. And I fucking, I want, I want, I made a stream over like an hour this morning. I was just going off, bro. Like mm. what, you know, like what, what's up, bro? You know, fucking, and um, he's in my comments. He asked me for my phone number. I gave him my phone number. So he said I'll drive four hours. I'm like, okay, come on, <laughs> come on. But you know what? Okay, so let me let me just put up here so he commented on your comment and he says he didn't start he says you did he says you've been nah. in your feeling about me secretly i let it slide too many times how do i even know about you because you made a too video about times. me he says you made a video about him is that um is that true no too many no. times i laughed it I off. Know, so the guy's a grown man what he wants to he wants to he wants to fucking go halfway across america to fight some guy that he's seen on camera i mean good luck with that one man Dude, yeah, it, it's, it's kind of a weird reply. It kind of shows like how he makes his videos too. He has no real basis after a while. And he just starts saying things that he can't substantiate. Yeah, he like, just Johnny thinks, never you said know what nothing. Is? He thinks yeah. he's talking some woke shit. Like he's some real woke dude. Dude, you're a clown, man. Like, man. Nobody take, like I don't take him serious. I mean, the guy, like I said, made his channel off of this and Wilder. I personally don't like Wilder. But some of the shit that he said was yeah. not true was not true okay and he's basically running off of that and and then he thinks he's cute with the homosexual fans and like dude you're a flomo fan you don't even know that he failed the test motherfucker like <laughs> you're, 
Anyone that doesn't rate Lomachenko, though, to, for me, anyone that doesn't rate Lomachenko knows fuck all about boxing. And like I said, Bruce Fain, he, he's more of a, what's the word? He's more of a a parody act, if you get what I'm saying, be, than he is a boxer. Yeah. yeah. Be, be, yo, and, 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 and bro, this is, the th- this is the thing. It wouldn't even let me reply to that second comment he left on there. It don't even mm. let me reply to it. That's now he's beautiful. on my channel talking. I'm like, well, you know, come on. Yeah, that's a beautiful like, rich. Like I just hope you know what you're walking into, bro. And if you, if you know, <laughs> I, can't wait. I just hope, like I say, I just hope you know what you're walking into, bro. And if you got a bunch of people with you, bro. I, mm-hmm. <laughs> but let me, okay, that's, let me say this, man. Let me say this because be it's gonna be a bad night for you, bro. That's all I'm gonna say. I put the disclaimer <laughs> up. I put the disclaimer up a couple of minutes ago because people always think that uh, this channel. Or well, what you guys say is a complete representation of the channel. I'm gonna go on the record here and say that I've, I I don't watch Bruce Vane's videos. The only video I watched was the one that Bucho sent me because he was talk he was um, accusing. Oh Shane... my god! Yeah, I know. <laughs> what what the hell was that? What was that? Was that you, Bucho? Was that, was that him? <laughs> the that hell was, was Bruce that? Vane. Bucho, don't start, man. You I don't start playing. That was, uh, I, that, okay. that was. Oh, um... That was low place, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, that is low place. But I was going to say... Oh, my was, God. Oh, BDA, was, go ahead. BDA, go ahead. Yeah, what I was going to say real quick was that uh, the, the the video that uh, Bucho sent me was that uh, show, uh, this guy, Bruce Wayne, he accused Showbiz the adult of being a Satan worshiper. That's the only video I've seen of his. And I've, I've seen the titles. <laughs> I see it? <laughs> yeah, I've, I've seen t- uh, titles, his titles, so I, I sort of get the gist of what he's about. I don't know the fella, so I don't know if he's a... A bad guy or a good guy, but yeah, listen. If if you feel that Johnny Boy made a video about you, go in, go explain a little bit. I mean, you can just throw out accusations. But anyway, I just wanted to say something real quick here because I want to continue following this drama here. So what happened was that uh, this guy said that Johnny Boy, uh, he's accusing him of making videos about him and then erasing the videos. But then people in his own I community followed said, Johnny Boy. I've never seen a video that popped up on Johnny Boy's feed that says. I watch all Johnny Boy's videos. I don't comment on all of them, but I always like them. So I've never right. seen that. So that's a lie. <laughs> By the way, right, somebody... Just... But hold on, hold on, oh, Johnny sorry. Boy. Hold on. Let me just... Yeah. So then people started going at him because apparently they didn't like the, the way he, he went at it. And he says, some guy goes, first of all, whoever wrote this shit should go back and repeat elementary school. Can't spell for shit. <laughs> and that irks the shit out of me. So then Bruce says, I bet you thought I was talking some hot shit, huh? Pick one word that's obviously a mistake. Actually, there were not to be crude. I mean, I don't want to pick sides here, but there was a, a whole bunch of mistakes there. And then he says, he got the nerve to bring up educated. Shit, shut the, see again, shut the fuck up. Nitpicking, simple-minded hoe. And then St. Brit comes back and he says, Bruce, you're, a, okay, Bruce, you're an F word. Johnny will fuck you up. Then he, uh, Bruce Vane said, let's find out. Then another dude comes in and he says, I love your channel, Bruce. This doesn't change anything for me, but stop letting these guys get to you. You have a platform, rise above it. See, that's that's an even-tempered comment. Then somebody says, Bruce, I watch every single one of your videos. I'm a long-term subscriber, but actions like this make it seem like you have a very thin skin. Another guy comes in. And says, I agree with that comment. <laughs> Some other guy comes in. He says, shut the fuck up, N-word. You ain't about that life. Okay, I mean, come on. See, <laughs> that's the thing about, I will say this. Here's the thing, speaking in defense of Bruce Vane and Johnny Boy and everybody. You put yourself out there on YouTube. You're opening up yourself to people that will support you and people that will just, for some reason, attack you. You know, they just don't don't like you. They, there's they got some other issues themselves, and that's what we're seeing here. Because even in his own platform, his people are coming at him. Another guy goes, Bruce, you, Bruce, you're proving yourself to be an egotistic prick. The fuck is wrong with you spacing out like that with no excuse? To be honest, I'm a fighter and I've been in the game for a while. And I never carried myself like that. Don't let your boxing knowledge get to your head when MMA is taking over anyways. <laughs> and then he got, Bruce replied, your boy, AB, I know it's not about race. I know it's about race. Trust me, I know. Fuck you too. Different, different is I got bald to tell you flat out if that's what I mean. You undercover and jocking are Jews. You undercover and jocking are Jews. Uh, you guys are from the streets. Can you tell me? Can you translate that for me? Or is that just? I don't know what he's from. Say it again. You undercover and jocking are Jews. I don't know what the fuck that means. No, yeah, I don't know. That's some gay shit. But yeah, look, look. The, 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 the thing about the only thing I would say to, to advice to Johnny Boy, fuck that. Fuck him. Just tell him straight out. You come to Milwaukee, what? you find me. That'll be a big mistake on your part. That's it. 
That's yeah. just, just like that. That'll be a big mistake on your part. Yeah. Either way, like I say, I'll go down to Illinois too. It don't matter. It's just real quick. It's 40 minutes away. Chat. It don't matter. In the chat, El Dog makes an uh, interesting point. There's like 80 plus people watching, and there's only like a few likes. So come on. Let's see yeah, the hit like. the like button, man. What's wrong with you? You guys act yeah, like, like it costs you something. Punch exactly. that punch that punch that like button up just like I'm gonna punch this fucking idiot in the face if he's actually got the balls to drive out here. Now, now wait a minute. You can't make those types of uh threats here on this channel. Yeah, or I'll, I think yes. we have uh Bruce Wayne's gonna look like J Rock did last night when uh, Johnny's finished with him. Oh, we got a phone call, you said? Bucho? Yeah. All right, yeah. let's let's con I'm gonna continue reading a couple of comments afterwards, but let's take this phone call real yeah. quick. Five eight five, you're on the air. Five eight five. It's Vinny Mac. How you got this going? Uh, I believe this was Mr. BDA. This is Vince. What's up, Vinny? How you doing, man? I'm doing pretty well, guys. Um, yes. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the fight that you guys failed to cover this weekend with uh, Mr. J Rock and Mr. Rosario. Thank you. Yeah, we talked about it, genius. Hey, Vinny. Where the fuck have you been in the last hour, mate? That's what we've been talking about it. I mean, you know, how dare you come on yeah, here guys, and uh, just assume that we have been speaking about this fight? Yeah, you snob. How dare you? We had a pre fight yeah. talk. Well, first yeah. of all, hold on, hold on. It was an honest mistake. It was an honest mistake from Vinny's part. It was an honest mistake from Vinny's part. I'm not going to let you go after my project that way, all right? <laughs> all right, I apologize. <laughs> Um, get your wallet ready. What's up? Uh, Thank you, Mr. BDA. Yeah. All right, so what's on your mind, Vinny? Um, yes, guys. Um, I just thought Mr. Rosario looked really strong. Um, I also thought that this uh this topic should have been covered this weekend, so I'm kind of disappointed in Mr. Bucho, <laughs> but he understands, and um, you know, I it you don't have to apologize, Mr. Bucho. I understand completely. All right. Well, Vinny, we, uh, I get. All right. Fine. Vinny, let's be real, yeah, right? Yes, sir, uh, did that for, Did you get up in the Vinny? Yeah. Let's be real. Did you get up in the mo morning, yeah, and think get that real excitement and that butterflies in your, your your stomach, knowing that um J Rock was fighting at the, at the, at the end of the night? I mean, no, you didn't. Nor did anyone else on this planet. No one cared. Let's be real. It was. Good fight in the end, but the Mr. reason it didn't get no coverage because no yeah, one Mr. asked Bucho, for it. Uh, no, not one person mentioned that fight before it happened. I'm telling you, I've been looking at the chat, I've been watching the shows, I've been on the shows. Not one person mentioned Rosario J Rock fight until it happened. But that's that's basically where we are with that fight. I enjoyed the fight, but it's not, not a big name on paper. They're doing a terrible job at the PBC, building up their fights. Let's be real. There's no coverage. Did, did, did you see a press conference of that fight? I mean, I know recognised it. I didn't. I didn't see anything on my subscriptions come up. There's no, just hardly anything about. So that's what. No, I didn't. Well, I didn't see anything, uh, Stu. But go ahead, uh, Vinnie Mac. Explain yeah. to us, you know, why you're so mad at us because we didn't cover this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great fight. My Packers just stuffed the Niners, bro. What's up with it? We ain't got palm trees and fucking homos yes. out here. <laughs> so, you're, so you're telling me you guys didn't watch the prelims as well of the uh, PBC on Fox on FS2? Fox yeah, Fox Vinny, bye. <laughs> well, this is when you, this I is watched, when you like, lose yeah, Goodbye. I thought I watched Iron Man 3 for the temp time or something instead. I'm not, I'm not sure why you guys are saying bye. Um, I guess you guys aren't uh, diehard boxing fans like myself. Oh, I'm sorry, oh, man, that, you know, we get up that. for every goddamn boring fight that comes on the PBC. I mean, yeah. I'm sorry. I don't get up for all no. of it, but That's right. <laughs> look, if you want to know, I, I thought going into this fight that this is a tricky fight for J-Rock for a lot of reasons. I didn't pick against him, um, but it turned out that way, man. It turned out yeah. that, you know, he underestimated the situation and got beat up. Yeah. yeah. Listen, we've got high standards on the BDA, Vinny. Um, you know, very high standards, and we've been we've been fed a lot of trash recently. And yes, even the, these um, top fights are meant to be top fights. They've been yes. disappointing, so it's very hard for us to get up for, for for any sort of boxing at the moment until there's a 
It's just the word. We're disheartened, Vinny. I think that's what it is, and I think that's probably... Well, well it's also the beginning of the year, right? And we, we yeah, went through a dry spell, it's that, and yeah, it's been probably. the holidays to where, like, if Rosario is the fighter, he was in training camp, like you guys were alluding to, like, for 16 weeks, and uh, Williams was just barely, like, well, he didn't get up for it because we're only, like, three weeks removed from uh, New Year's. That could have also, like, been a factor. Yeah, but for, I, I'm sick of this excuse. He was... Yeah, that's he not... That's, I'm not buying he, that. I'm not... I think, I I think he, listen... That just shows you how poor the guy really was. Didn't deserve to be a champion. Gets the belt. Wait, I mean, and for me, gee, for me, you're not a world champion to you defend your titles. That's Because right. you can get you can get That's given right. a belt from the postman these days. So you have to defend your world titles for me to be for me to call you a world title. And Look at we want to know who you're away. defending against too. We want to know who exactly. you know. It's got to be a somebody. And look, yeah, that, look, in, in Williams' de defense, he was ripped like he always is. He's always ripped. The kid is always in good shape. I'm not buying that he, you know, and I, I know that's not what you're saying, Gonzalo. Maybe you're Second saying maybe. Listen, even if he was in I, shape, I, I just, he just wasn't ready. Given up. He wasn't ready for this kid. This kid was was he wasn't. determined. He, he was determined yeah. to uh, knock him out. Hey, Vinny Mac, get your wallet ready. All right, buddy? Yeah. That's what you should be worried about. Get your wallet ready. Put some money in there. It's happening. Uh, Vinny, Vinny, up, bro. Vinny's got uh, two yeah, paper yeah, rounds yeah. now, haven't you, Vinny? Uh, can you repeat that, Mister Stu? I said you've got you've got two paper rounds now to pay fucking recognize all the money you get home. <laughs> you you guys think the stoppage was early? No, um, well, no, 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 no. no, no. no. Yes, uh, look at his face; he wasn't even complaining. He was out. He was all over the place. Mac, really. Let, let, let oh. Vinny Mac finish uh, one last point. Go ahead, Vinny. Yes. Um, to all, all, everyone in the chat and in the archives this weekend, um, Danny Garcia versus Ivan Redcash, only on the PBC. Make sure you guys tune in. Um, should be explosive. Yeah. And uh, the <laughs> winner should be facing uh, the number one pound for pound on my list now is Mr. Earl Spence Jr. Thank you, guys, and have a great yeah. night. Very fantastic. I can, see the I can see the fireworks now. Wow. Oh, Thank you, Vinny, wow. for the call. Danny Garcia is boring to watch when he's in a big fight, never mind a poor one. I just, I just can't, I can't get up for Danny. I, I just don't know why. I've, I've watched him so many times where he just doesn't throw enough shots for me. Dangerous guy. I mean, I keep hearing about this power Danny Garcia's got. Never seems to stop anyone, though, apart from the Rod Solkers and the Amir Khans of this world. So, just, mm. it just it, when I hear his name, do I get excited? Not really, no. And that's, that's just being honest. You know what? Um, Vinny's still there? No, uh, no. Thank you, Vinny. Thank you, Vinny, for the call. He, no, he's gone. No, he's back no. to uh, drinking that Pepsi. Diet Pepsi. Hey, Vinny. Hopefully. I know you're listening. You know how we end all conversation. Oh, no. What's yeah. funny, Errol Spence ever since the car accident, he keeps going up on the pound for pound list. <laughs> he hasn't done to fought anybody. His only Jeez. regrets because he had a terrible accident. He keeps going up on the pound for pound list. Gonzalo. <laughs> Gonzalo. Amigo. Amigo. Gonzalo. Gonzalo. Yeah. Oh, your, yeah. your, your, Chiefs, your Chiefs won. I was just going to tell you that, bro. Just so That's you know. right. I lived in Kansas for three years, so I rock with the Chiefs. <laughs> I just want to tell you that, Gonzalo, because I know you were having trouble finding the game. And by the way, I mean, if you look at that pa that power for power list joke, anyway, I mean Adrian Broner used to go up the list every time he was on TMZ. I mean, I just can't tell. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so he talked about uh, Rosario. We talked about that. So, okay, so how how's this uh, Bruce Wayne thing gonna recover? Um, Johnny Boy, how's this going to be resolved? I mean, are you going to leave well, him alone? Or? There's one of two ways. Either he's bullshitting or mm -hmm. he comes out here and gets murked, bro. It's it's one yeah. or the other. It's, 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 it's gonna be, Johnny's going to be like Stevenson Gallin, Mark for death. Yeah, anybody, <laughs> seen anybody seen Richie? <laughs> Chopping up dreads left, right, and center, man. Anybody seen Richie? Anybody know why he killed Bobby Loop? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody seen Richie? Anybody know why he whacked Bobby Lupo? <laughs> Fucking uh, Steven Seagal uh, uh, references over here. Hey, by the way, I'm reading because I'm just reading through the comments here of uh, when Bruce Wayne called you out. I see your old friend Hamed is in there and he says, fact is you never show your face on camera or go live and you call yourself Bruce Wayne. Man, you ain't about that life. You just make a living off bashing Wilder and stay in your lane. Okay, first of all, 
I don't show my face either. I don't see. I don't see what. I think that's a little dig from Hamed at ours, uh, uh, my side over here, and I don't appreciate that. Somebody yeah, else said. Yeah. Somebody else said "calladito," which means silent. Mas bonito. So, Everyone is tough. It's coming. You know what I know. You, oh, you know on. what I noticed? Oh, sorry, BD. Yeah, just real quick. It says, man, it's comedy. Pure pinche blah, blah, blah. You have your opinion. He has his. Some people love talking shit and come off like motherfuckers are hating. Or they love cock writing. It's biz last time I checked. Nobody reports everyone has their faves. Like pinche putos. He's scared. He's gay. He's ducking. It's fucking. It's a fucking business. So get it straight because if you know boxing, you should know that back in the day you had to take an L to get a title. Okay, these guys. Okay, so then anyway, those are the comments. There's a whole lot. Check them out, and he, he, that's on Bruce Vane's uh, community page. Just wanted to resolve that, uh, by the way. I, I says I. Well, I saw them. I said, well, if you can get a pry bar and and pry your mouth off of AJ's dick, then oh, you can maybe <laughs> then you that, then you then you can maybe find your way into a vehicle. And and maybe you can you can you know uh, unglue your hands from giving Floyd Mayweather hand jobs, and then you can maybe get in that vehicle, and maybe you can drive. All and right. then, like you know I what? say, that's yeah. very no no that's not the way we do it. But you know what? It would be fun to have a debate because we want to be hosting debates debates here on neutral ground. We had Precise versus what was it? Uh, Ring IQ. So it would be nice to have another one here. Maybe, but even I don't know. There's no what's the there's no debate right? It's just Heath says you made a video about him. Yeah, and, uh, but the, thing is, like, the thing is, the thing is, that's what I mean about people like Bruce Vane, yeah, who like said that proper Anthony Joshua fanboys. It basically his channels based on getting British people to support him because he's fucking bigging up Joshua all week. But the, like I said, there's a saying: don't ever meet your fucking uh, idols because you'll be disappointed. And uh, yeah. and, and that's a, that's a true statement. Like I said. It he, is. He, he, sits here, what, he wants to fight Johnny Boy over fucking people like Joshua and stuff. But if he went in the street, walked past Joshua and said, "All right, Joshua, I'm a big fan." Joshua will give him the fucking time of day. Don't don't be fooled by this friendly, humble Joshua when the cameras are about. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? Remember, this That's is the same true, guy yeah. that called Eddie Chambers a disgrace to the to to the superior race. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> what? Ooh, yes, yeah, everybody knows this. He did this a long time ago. You yeah. know what? Can I Joshua, just say Joshua DM'd? He went and DM'd um, Eddie Chambers. I don't know how this whole thing started, and just out of nowhere, just said, "You're a disgrace. This is a superior race." Oh, okay. No. And Eddie Chambers showed it to every to everyone, and AJ said somebody hacked his Instagram or whatever the fuck it was. Yeah. Well, let, let me just say this. Let me just say this real quick, because I, I don't even give. Well, fuck if he comes he comes if he don't he don't but if he, bro uh, like i say if he does if he does come I, i'm gonna be taking a second trip to the uh all male university there so i'll see his no i don't think i don't think that <laughs> he's I not think... johnny johnny he's not coming he's not yeah he's, not, uh... I, I i i i can tell by the dude's voice he yeah. just wants attention that he wants he's doing videos He's got a lot of subscribers. He he may feel a, like a a bit of an ego. He thinks he's his boxing knowledge is better than everybody else. Uh, really, he's just somebody that doesn't really know what he's talking about. To be honest with you, and bro, I, don't, it, I don't even think he's he's crazy enough. Hey, mate, Johnny, bro, 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 what, 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 Johnny, one second. You, go ahead, go ahead. One second, still. One second, still. I was just gonna go say. I was just gonna say. I mean, like I say, man, I, you know, I, I'm not, you know how I know he's not, he's not, he's not serious, bro, is because I didn't even make a video about him. I didn't say a fucking word about the kid. That post was just out of the fucking <laughs> blue, bro. That's bizarre, man. That's bizarre. No, but, but you... that's probably, listen, let's be real. Um, on this uh, show, we have a lot of two-faced rats. And I'm oh. sure a lot of them um, are listening to your show as well. They just come here, listen, make out they're all right with us and go back and report. And I know that's happening. So that's probably what's happening. Yeah, you know, they, I, like I said, Johnny, well, I've so seen them. I've seen yeah. them comment on on their channels, and they, the only way they knew that information is they watched your videos. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I don't some, appreciate like every yeah. they, they're repeating everything you said about that fighter. Like, get the fuck out of here! I don't care what, what you mate. say about a fighter. Listen, yeah. If you're waiting for fucking Bruce Vane to turn up, mate, you'll be you'll, you'll be looking like fucking Carlo Gambino before he <laughs> dies. I don't appreciate he being coming, called. man. He ain't but, coming, mate. I'm telling you. Oh, this is the DMs. Look, and, and look Bruce Vane's gonna Bruce Vane's gonna, gonna turn Josh up looking like fucking to say uh, to yeah. Eddie Chambers for no reason. 
Bruce Wayne's going to turn up looking like fucking Morgan Freeman out of Shawshank, isn't he? He's going to be like <laughs> fucking old. <laughs> By the nah, way, I'm... he's he's going to turn up looking like fucking if fucking around with me. He's going to turn up looking like Spalatro Brothers after. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not like, bro. Fucking like rat. His whole family's all rats. Would have brought up to be a rat. <laughs> I listen. I I wanted to say something. Uh, right. <laughs> I wanted to say something uh, here because um, it's true. Listen, don't meet your idols. Stu mentioned that a couple of um, minutes ago, but I just want to point out that that's why the the Bible is very adamant about idolatry. You do not idolize false gods. I tell you, who's never going to let you down though, and that's Jesus Christ Himself. God bless Him. Listen, I wanted to move on to here from the whole <laughs> internet drama that we've had. And um, I mentioned something real quick about Floyd Mayweather because uh, Conor McGregor fought last night, made his comeback against a shop-worn, let's call it what it is, he was a shop-worn Donald Cerrone. Well, he looked pretty good, McGregor did, first round knockout, can't fault him for that. But now, apparently, according to boxing scene, Floyd Mayweather teases rematch with Conor McGregor. You have some president. BDA. Dana White. Hold, BDA. On, let me ju- hold on, let me just oh, establish. Yeah, let me just establish the situation. After the fight was over, five division world champ Floyd Mayweather took to social media to post a mock event poster, which teased a potential rematch in 2020. UFC president Dana White advised several reporters that Mayweather has already reached out to him via private messages, but he would not reveal the specifics of what was said. Earlier this week, McGregor made it clear that he wanted to return to the sport of boxing, as one of his goals was to secure a rematch with Mayweather. Now, Bucho, didn't you tell me he also posted, a, a, a Mayweather also posted a mock poster of him against Khabib in 2020? Yes. Or for 2020? An hour later on Instagram. Yes. Okay. So why, uh, my question to you guys is why can't Floyd Mayweather just, you know, he's retired. He's been retired for about um, three years now from boxing. Why Why is he still peddling this type of um, exhibition Be- fight? Because I'll tell you what. Uh, 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 a fucking addiction. That's yeah. why. He, he he listen bro his pockets is running thin he's got so much fucking so many fucking illegitimate bastard kids he's got so many fucking <laughs> he's, he, he's got he's got so many fucking his pockets are running thin his pockets are running listen, thin I'm t- this guy and spends it, two million on watches if not more sometimes he's got five Bacatis in all, all sorts of colors the guy's got spending habits everyone's got everyone's got a weakness some of us might be, a cannabis might be our weakness, and someone else might be cocaine, and gambling, alcohol, whatever it is. There's a, someone, most of us have always got a weakness. Floyd's is spending money, and let's exactly. be real. It's, money is a, listen. Money is a fucking uh, an addiction. The more you get, the more you want. Oh, when hell you see yeah. these, when the you see these drug, yeah, when the you see these drug lords, right? When you see these drug lords that have made billions and billions of dollars, right? And you think to yourself, just call it a day, go and chill out with your family. But no, they keep going until they get caught. And why do they do it when when they I can't even, they'll never spend all that money? It's an addiction, and Floyd's got it. Yep. Yep. Right. He ain't getting no hundred million dollars. They know that's not happening. The the next hundred million dollar payday, and it's gonna tempt him. I'm telling you. He's going to say, all right, fuck it. I mean, I'll just prepare for my ass whipping. That's all. It'll That's all he's going to prepare for is, is how bad that ass whip is going to be. There's a reason why he don't fight boxers no more. There's the reason why. He'll fight why. McGregor again, mate. That McGregor fight will happen again. That, 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 that's the only fight Floyd can take and make that sort of money. Without he knows getting, it. There's no one without, else. Without how getting the shit sell? kicked out of him. How is exactly. that going How is that fight? Oh, mate. Be- listen. McGregor, McGregor, hey, worldwide might not do in the north, northern um, America, but worldwide that thing will fucking sell, mate. I'm telling you, it will. It was a mismatch. It's gonna be another like people aren't like. Did you see the, hey, it, it was up there with Pacquiao numbers. The Pacquiao fight. It was up there yeah. with them numbers. The last one. It was the yeah. first fight. It was. Listen, listen, McGregor, but listen, the, yeah. listen, that will still sell, mate. That will fucking still sell. It might not be as big, but big as the last one. A, yeah, but still, Floyd made like 180 million. The Connor made Ooh, like. Why do you think 90, he hasn't taken million. the Pacquiao fight? Why do you think he had. You, listen, he can make yeah. another $100 million to fight Pacquiao. There's no doubt. The reason why is because Pacquiao beats fire out of him. That's it. That's the only reason why he hasn't taken it. Yeah. Okay? And I would say.
Pacquiao beat him the first fight. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. In my opinion, he won that fight. One, one bitch was running. The other one was trying to fight. That's it. Pacquiao, did he look bad in trying to fight? Yes. But he wasn't getting hurt. He wasn't getting hit with anything. The other bitch got yeah. credit for just running around the ring. Pacquiao threw that fight. Pacquiao, and, and, Pacquiao would have dom dominated Stu that thinks, fight. And you got Stu who thinks, and I don't think Stu's the only one. You got other people that believe he threw that fight. So anyway, whatever, hmm. the, whatever the thing is, the reason why he hasn't taken... Look, Canelo. Easy money. Honestly. Canelo, he could make an easy $100 million. The reason yeah, why... Yeah, but he don't want that. He don't want he that. He can't drain Canelo this time. He cannot... It's not going to happen. Canelo's going to give him the lion's share of the money only for one reason, to kill Floyd. That's it. <laughs> That's the only reason why he's going to give him the lion's share. He's going to say, here you go. I'm fucking you up. You know that, right? I'm not stopping. You quit or I'm, I'm just going to keep beating you up. You know? And that's it. That's what's going to happen. Floyd's a joke. He was never the baddest man on the planet. No. He's never, never. Not even amongst girls. He's a Okay, come on. Wait a minute. <laughs> no, he's just not. Listen, no, he's he, a great I... boxer. He's a great boxer. He's a finesse pity pat boxer. He was never the baddest man on the planet. He wasn't a the fighter. Big... No, to be the baddest man on the planet, you got to be able to hurt people. You got to hurt them at will. Don't tell me he, he could have did that, but he fought. No, he did that because he can't. He can't hurt people. Yeah, but I think hurt. He, he, can't call any and he can't call any boxer that's not heavyweight the baddest man on the planet. It's just No, I, I mean, listen, listen. You could, you could say, look, if you want to say Canelo, Triple G, guys like that, oh, those dudes knock people out. I would disagree with you, but I would say, yo, they fuck dudes up. You know what I mean? They put them in the hospital the whole night, you know? That's the kind of guys they are. So, no, you don't put a, a, a pillow-fisted fighter as the baddest man on the planet. He never was that. Well, he wasn't necessarily uh, feather-fisted. I mean, he did uh, manage to keep guys honest. And, for example, Hatton thought he was a feather-fisted puncher, and you saw what happened to him. But you, you're right. I understand your point, and you're 100% uh, correct. Boxing, fantastic. You get to move, it's hit and don't get hit, okay. But don't go out there pretending. And that's one thing that, that's one point that Joe Rogan made to the build up to the McGregor Floyd fight was that Floyd would, you know, it was, a, both guys knew what, what was up. They didn't to sell the fight, but he said, it's interesting watching Floyd talking about how he's going to beat his ass and all that. But he knows that if McGregor took him to the street, he would murder him just with the kicks alone, with the groundwork alone. And it's, it was bro. interesting watching Mayweather in that position. Yeah, go ahead. Bro, listen, listen, bro. Mayweather's a bitch. Okay, he's always been a bitch. <laughs> he's the biggest coward in boxing history. He's a woman. Like I say, that man, like I always say, bro, that man can't go to the gas station to pick up a stick of fucking deodorant without 30 fucking roided up to the fucking Gill's bodyguards with. He's a pussy. He's a pussy. In no. boxing, he's a, he's, a, he's a fucking bitch, bro. Like, he's always been a bitch. He's a bitch. Uh, <laughs> he's okay. the, bro, he's the kind of kid He's the kind of dude Like growing up, if you smack the fuck out of him He'd cry and go call his brother His older brother that, <laughs> no, he, You know what he was? Look, he was smart enough to understand He's the kind of kid that was smart enough to understand He's not as tough as he talks He's the kind of guy that'll fight you In a bad situation That's it, meaning bad for you, not him uh, yeah. He's the kind of guy that will have 20 dudes with him All flinching to hit you if you fight back and beat his ass. That's the kind of kid he is. You yeah, catch him yeah. in an equal situation, he ain't nowhere to be found. He's like, nope, I ain't fighting that guy. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> real get, quick, he, real he, quick. He gets... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I think, I think oh. he's proved, I think he's proved he's quite tough. I, real I, quick, I, 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 real quick. Just got a, two super chats here. Uh, from Dirt and Boxing, a.k.a. Michael Stott says, Roast motherfucker Floyd the Duck, Mayweather recognize fire. Uh, sorry, shout out to Michael Stutt, even though I couldn't really understand what that means. Al Dog says, Pacquiao is a pillow Pacquiao. fisted, one KO in 11 years, laughing my fucking ass off. One thing I wanted to say about uh, Floyd Mayweather walking around, with, I always find it bizarre why he walked around with so many bodyguards. Even when he wasn't a mainstream star, he was already walking around with a bunch of bodyguards. Is that? Do you guys think that's because he was traumatized by what happened with the James Prince situation? I, listen, 
Floyd Mayweather is one of the most paranoid men you'll ever ever come across in your life. <laughs> Listen, this guy's got all them houses, all that money. Do you know where he spends most of his time? Hmm. In the penthouse of the MGM Grand. Do you know why? Because he feels safe there. There's security there. Um, listen, he doesn't trust anyone. And I don't blame him either. He's a lot smarter than what people give him credit for. He don't trust no fucker. And, and that's the best way to be. Look at all them leeches hanging around him. You think Floyd could leave his watch around? Most of us could leave our watch on the side. No one's going to even want to fucking nick the thing. But not Floyd. It's a two million watch sitting on the side. He has to be smart. He has to be aware. And he's paranoid. And that's how you have to be when you've got that sort of money. You can't let your guard down. So... He'd get robbed if he was if he was sitting at his house on his own. He'd have been robbed many a times. So he has to have and the way he feels safe about himself is to surround himself with loads of security and loads of money team members, and that's when he feels safe about himself. But he just still doesn't trust these guys. But yeah, like I said, a very paranoid guy, Floyd Mayweather. It's a good point, man. Because why would you? See, F Floyd is the kind of guy that you can physically. In the streets, you can physically manhandle him and rob him. So it's true. What uh, I think there's a lot of truth to what what um, Stu was saying. He is paranoid. You can manhandle him. He's a little dude, bro. I mean, like, let's 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 face it. He's... You got to remember, right? You just take Floyd's fucking leather jacket off him. It's probably forty grand, fifty grand, if not yeah. more. It's yeah. a good good days good days work at the office just by grabbing the fucking guy's jacket off. Yeah, him. and I know this guys is... who could physically take that off of him. Easy, yeah, not, well, not a problem. Well, there's fucking, there's, listen, there's fucking dudes in America walking around like Bob Sapp. What, what are they going to do when they grab hold of Floyd? <laughs> yeah. Bob Sapp. Yeah. Wait a minute. Those wait a minute. Didn't, didn't Look, what Floyd do you think Mayweather... Mike Tyson would do to him? What do you think Mike, a guy like Mike Tyson... Nah, but recognize, him... recognize. Didn't Floyd Mayweather beat the big show over at the, the WWF over there? Yeah, that's true. He did. But even there fucking Dillian White. <laughs> Dillian, even fucking Dean White. Dillian White's brother, man. He could just take Floyd's jacket off him if he wanted yeah. to. Look at the size of that guy. Do you know what I mean? Uh, look, silk, silk, silky jabs is not going to get you out of them situations, is it? Let's be real. Of course. Of course, man. You know, good, good footwork and a Philly shell is not going to fucking save your jacket. <laughs> by the Sorry. way, by the way, um, there's a guy in the chat, Real Talk. He says, I'm confused. You guys are talking about Floyd like he didn't beat your favorite fighters, Kodo, Hatton, Manny. First of all, if you obviously haven't been watching the show if you think Kodo is our favorite fighter. <laughs> I mean, some of the things we've said about him. not my favorite fighter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of the things we've said about him and his kids, man. I mean, I all, all in jest, of course. Dude. All in jest. <laughs> he's, your, he's, he's your fantasy favorite fighter. Oh, he, come on. You wish, he was, you wish he was our favorite fighter. That's, that's, that's what you probably going on there. And real talk in the chat, he says, I'm confused. You guys are talking about Floyd like he didn't beat your favourite fighters. Yeah. Carl, Hatton, Manny, Mosley, Oscar. I mean, yeah, fair point. But like I said, it doesn't change the fact that Floyd's still what, what we said he was, whether he won the fights or not. I mean, well, just because he beat just because he beat Ricky Hatton, it doesn't mean he's not paranoid and stuff. And he's not. He's not. A yeah, listen, it's not, it's, to me, listen, it's not a fair point because, number one, Kodo's not my favorite fighter. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's oh, well, Rick, so, Rick, hey. what Ricky second, has second, mine. We're not talking about we're not talking about what he did in the ring. We're talking about the fact that he needs bodyguards because he's a little man. He's like he's built like a woman. Like, <laughs> I, I don't blame him either. Listen, let me tell you something. If I had Floyd's money, I'd have bodyguards as well because I don't trust the people around me either, especially when that sort of money's flying around. They're all my mates now, but when there's a fucking two million pound watch on the fucking side, I'm sure friendship goes out the window very fast. So, yeah, I don't blame him for being paranoid. I don't blame him for worried about his safety. There's a lot of people out there that want to hurt Floyd Mayweather. They don't like the guy. So, you know, I can understand it, but... Who's yeah, Floyd? In, uh, the, Floyd. The, in the comment about that's, that's, Pacquiao being pillow fisted and only having one knockout in 11 years, I don't agree with that. I shook the man's hand. He's heavy handed. He's fighting bigger guys. And if he was pillow fisted, he'd be getting run over by his other guys because he likes to, uh, he's stationary or he comes forward. He doesn't run. So if he'd be pillow fisted, all these other guys would just go to him and KO him because they got nothing to fear. But obviously, he punched hard to where these guys. Don't want to trade with him because he's always been in competitive fights. And mm -hmm. it, he's even managed to drop most of everybody he's faced. Remember That's when right. he dropped that guy six times? And uh, I don't, I don't guys... see man, I don't see Manny Pacquiao planting his feet like he used to in his prime. He's still got the pop. He's still got enough to hurt you, drop you five or six times. But the record speaks for itself. One stoppage in 11. Was it 11 years? Someone said in the chat. 
I mean, if that's the case, well, he, he he got Matisse, but he dropped Thurman. He had fucking uh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. He's dropping these guys. He's hurting them. He's hurting them. But that that. That power, that you know, the Hatton power, the Margarita power, that sort of power, the De La Hoya power, that that's not there anymore. He's just yeah, not he sitting had Broner hurt. What's the guy from Australia? Yeah. Jeff Broner, he had him better from pillar to post yeah. in the eighth or ninth round. Freaking, but that's uh, the, the, a lot of that's the a lot of that's the timing of the shots and and you know and because he's naturally a smaller guy too. He's he's a he's a lightweight fight, fighting welterweights. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm a, Jimmy's on the line and. I have a question for Jimmy. Why is Floyd so obsessed with fighting Khabib and Conor McGregor again? Uh, well, the the deal with um, they're really uh, I guess from what I'm being told is Dana White is even more serious than I first thought about uh, taking over the PBC. If not taking over the PBC, he's going to be looking to make an inroad into boxing. Um, so. I think he want, he, obviously he's going to keep the UFC. Uh, and I'll tell you right now, this could, you know what? I, I can't stand him. You know where, my, where I feel on, where I stand on him. But the one thing about him, he will not baby any fighters. It's either you fight or you fuck off. And that's one of the things he's been really talking about is how these guys are making too much money and uh, they're making too much money for fighting scrubs. He says it's yeah. just because, and he, and he said, he goes, listen, if it wasn't for the absolute hardcore fan base from that's been passed on from generations from the you know from generations back he said if this product today is what was going on all along it just wouldn't survive and it wouldn't i mean j-rock last night going into that fight i i had i couldn't decide i was going to kind of had it as a pick em, but because of the fact that not only did he let any mo you know momentum he gained after the herd fight just dissipate fizzle away he waited almost a year to fight again he never got into a rhythm last night he didn't look no. He looked like he and the other dude on the, on the other hand, or Rosario's fought eight times in the last two and a half years. He fought four or five times in January 2016, four times in 2017. You could just see him. He was in a rhythm quicker. He was loose. They there's don't no think about it as much. Fights, Jimmy. Jimmy, there's no substitutes for fights. Nothing, Sparring, brother, nothing. Jim White, nothing. If you you've got to keep busy when you're in your best shape of your life. And then the Punch then the calluses, results, dude. I just don't exactly. listen, I don't get it. Gary Russell yep. Jr., another one. Just punch calluses. I can't stress that enough, man. It's such a difference. Like, even at the level I did it at, man, it was different breaks of the year that you didn't spy. You just, you know what I mean? Especially, so the first time you always go back, that first day sparring, punches always just ring you a little bit more. They just, you feel them, you literally build up a callus, a punch callus. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, and I just, you got the headgear off yeah. if you're with the little gloves, but. Uh, by the way, Jimmy, this is BDA. Thank you for being on, man. Um, I wanted to ask you in terms of if, if, let's say, Dana White takes over the PVC, he picks up the slack or picks up what's left of the bones there. Do you think he's going to be paying these guys what they're used to or what, what the standard Absolutely is in not. boxing? Absolutely not. He'll, nah. he'll, get, he, he'll um, try to, I think, well, now here comes the problem. He used to just hate Bob Arum. I mean, call him some pretty horrible names. Arum doesn't like him. But after the McGregor uh, Floyd fight, he went fucking scorched earth on Mayweather. Again, he was on the Matt Sierra podcast last month. It was last month? I, it was last month when I heard it. Calling him a fucking cokehead piece of shit. <laughs> you fucking terrible human. Oh. Dumb. He's a fucking stupid crackhead junkie. Literally, dude, just fucking ripping him, saying. He doesn't do shit. And when he announced the fighters, at the, you know, <laughs> he didn't know. He's like, that fucking cokehead dummy didn't know any of the names. He even said it during the press conference. because well, I don't know these guys. And then he did say, uh, he didn't pronounce. Um, no, when he did that Tito Ortiz, fucking Chuck Liddell. Like Ortiz, I mean, uh, Mayweather, um, excuse me, De La Hoya made that fight through Golden Boy. Mm -hmm. Chuck Liddell was almost 55. Had no business fighting. He was never knocked out with one shot. I mean, by I mean, Tito Ortiz hasn't knocked anybody out in a long time. It goes to show you how worn he should have just never fought. And what he was was Oscar said, "Oh, talk shit about White," because White was saying, "I'm not talking as a promoter." He goes, "You know, Chuck has been my friend for 20 years, and I'm telling him as a friend, don't fucking do this." And then he said, "I didn't think anybody would promote, you know, okay it, but California State." You know, athletic commission took it on, but so there's some serious, serious bad blood there. 
really but like he he like he says i he like he said i hate oscar as much as i hate any other person Usually yeah, but Dana White, like Dana that. White needs to know the surroundings. He's, he can't go in there with that um, that dictatorship that he's got at the exactly. UFC. Exactly. So obviously, how it would work? I don't think things listen, would work out. He's going to have to like give and take a little bit here. He's going to have to pay these fighters bigger money than he wants to because if that's he's not going to get fighters. If not, he, he, it's like being a promoter, but you need fighters. So like being a promoter and having no fighters. That's Kelly Maloney. That you know what I mean. That, that, that fucking clown calls itself a promoter still. Who wants to be seen in the ring with that? So, you've got to have fighters, but Dana White's got a lot of power behind him, a lot of money, and I think if he does get it right, I think that's, I think he's what boxing needs, because like you said, you don't, you don't want anyone that's going to pussyfoot around. This guy's going to put their, his guys in with, with tough opponents, and like I said, I think with Dana, I think when you do fight the best, he does reward you. He's not like a, a, a fucking, a, a real guy that, that doesn't pay you at all sort of thing he will pay you well if you if you're in the right fight so i like look at nate, uh, nate diaz gets millions and he's just uh, he, look at probably got nearly many defeats as he has wins and he fucking but because he puts on a show and he fights the best um he gets rewarded so i think i think what dana white does at ufc is a good thing in a way because it stops fighters from obviously ducking for a start and then um you know trying to con the fucking public you can't do that in the ufc can you and he would have to buy the PBC. Like, if he bought the PBC, in essence, he would be taking over their contracts. Taking over contracted fighters they could sell without Al. I'm sure it's in his stipulation that he could sell a contract. I heard McGregor so say he he's ha having something to do with it, though. His promotion's having something to do with it. So, I don't know. I just want to see. It's got to be a shake-up, because this is, this is... I mean, it's... Al don't want it, mate. Al Heyman does not want it at all. I wouldn't be surprised if he, you know, he, he come out of boxing soon. Just... Like I said he, he's made his money like he did a lot of people lost a lot of money let's just say that but al made his we'll, we'll just keep we'll just leave it there but um i don't think he wants it mate his heart's not in it you can see um the, look at the pbc events the the build-ups the promotions the, is there a billboard in sight with a fighter's name on it anywhere where there's a people's no, no chance i mean you, you can't even That'd watch be crazy the you can't even watch the fights in the uk gonzalo anymore I cannot watch these people. Team from the, no one's even snapping them up. They're not even bothered to sell them. Before. It's just yeah. it's fucking Bob Stark. The LGBC shit. would have a fit if, if Dana White bought um, the PBC because, you know, the, his last name is White and they think they're like pro black. So <laughs> Dana White buying the, the PBC. Yeah, but the thing is with Dana, one thing, one thing Dana White is not a racist. I don't care what anyone's. Dana White is not a racist. You know, Dana, like I said, but Dana White, the, because a lot of the PBC fighters are snowflakes, a little, uh, you know, right, the pansies off of them, aren't they? Always whining, like, always ducking fights and always pulling out of fights. And none of them have got the stomach for it. So Dana White's not going to tolerate that. So, yeah, maybe there might be a clash there. I wonder if Dana White is good at negotiating, though, because. But I know he has full control over the fights, right? Like, okay, you fight this guy, you don't like it, well, what are you going to do about it? Exactly. In... It, it, yeah. His negotiations are, you're fighting him, you're getting that, don't like it, get the fuck out of the UFC. What, what's the fighter going to say? Yeah. So, you've got to remember, he's bought all the surrounding um, companies as well. We, we, Bellator's about the only one you can go to, and Bellator's second it, it, right. And then, then there's Pride, right, in Japan, and there's a big, there's a Russian, um, there's a Russian federation, I guess, pays pretty well, too. But the big name, like you said, is UFC. That's, that's yeah, you know, that that's pride, major pride, Pride's not like it was when you had fucking Shogun Hua and all them people in the Wanderlei Silver and... And even Chuck Liddell was in Pride for a bit, all them sort of guys. I mean, that was, Pride was good then when they'd feed all Emelianco and so them. You haven't got them guys now. Pride's, Pride's trash. Really it doesn't is, isn't it? Pride anymore. He hey, was hey did, did you guys talk about, because I got on late, did you guys already talk about Estrada or that shit kid show around? You just, um, make that, that kid's going to be fucking, your kid's going to be fucking shit and blood for two years. You see that body, that liver shot, that fucking, uh, that Ubakistanian kid gave that. Estrada last night? Or was that two nights ago? I didn't see it. <laughs> you didn't see the fight? The Showbox fight? No. Who was Friday that between Jimmy? What's that? Showbox. Friday night. Yeah. They have the Showbox no. series. Oh, no. Who was fighting then? Well, the Ubaki, the Biaki, Jesus Christ. Ubakistanian kid. Um, oh, tall, okay. fucking welterweight. Kid's got crazy power. Um, 
And, you know, in the first round, I think like 40 seconds into the first round, he caught this kid with a left to the liver. And the kid's just laying on the ground. No, no, no. But his head back and forth. <laughs> yeah, I know. This kid's got crazy uh, knockout right. power. He's had 300 amateur fights. Um, I've had my eye on him for a while. So, uh, yeah, no, this kid looks good. There's a couple yeah, of young there's kids a lot, coming There's out. a lot of good. A lot of good at Uzbek um, in the amateurs that come through from the amateurs. Um, they're going to be a real threat, some of them guys. Man. Well, that's where Khabib from. is from too, right? If I'm not mistaken. No, he's, from, you, you no, he's from, no, but he's from um, Dagestan. Oh, okay. He's from Dagestan. Uh, that's, that's, oh. um, yeah, it's around that area, isn't it? It's near Russia and all that. Like. But um, the, the Conor McGregor thing, I mean, it, it was actually pay-per-view in the UK. I mean, th th this is how dis disgusting it's getting. You know, MMA has been free on BT Sports for, for well, since I can remember. I, I subscribed to BT Sports to get the football and the UFC that's, and a bit of the boxing. That's why I got it. And now they're, try, they're charging me for McGregor v. Cowboy Cerrone. And let's be real, Cowboy Cerrone, I mean, I, I just didn't fancy this guy to last more than a couple of minutes anyway. He, he's just useless. I've never seen this guy and thought, yeah, this guy fight. He's always getting his ass whooped. Yeah, he keeps getting... Chance after chance after chance. He's the David you know, Price. You know, you know what it is though? Like to your to your um, point, uh, the reason why he gets so many chances is because he has the most knockouts by head kicks in the uh, UFC. The most yeah, wins by no, uh, knockouts. So Dana way. is, yeah, Dana. What he will do if you're still young enough to handle it, which Sharon is. But after last night, even Dana said, "I think it's time for him to." You the know, thing, yeah, Jimmy. The thing is, I mean, he's he's curling up them balls now. Before he was just take he was taking this punishment. Exactly. Yeah. But exactly. now he's curling. It's time. He's he's getting hit and he's curling up and balls. It's not the first time I've seen him do it. And that's that's a man that just the punch was the punch resistance is gone. That's age gone. Man. Exactly. That's, it's done. And and when, and when you put how many fights this guy has had, put another ten years age on on top of that, really, because that's what he's like. So he, the minute he took a shot, let's be real. Conor McGregor has one of the cleanest left hands in the UFC. When it lands, it, they, they usually go, don't they? So oh, when, yeah, when no, absolutely. I'm not one of those people who dog that kid's abilities. I know yeah. because he's brash. A lot of people like to fucking discount his abilities. His left hand is fucking awesome for boxing. Yeah, yeah. The way he throws it, he hides it. He hides his left hand. It's very accurate. Um, but yeah, no, the, he broke his nose with shoulder smacks. I don't know if you saw it. Yeah. It was impressive. It was. Dude, 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 I, I, I like when when Connor's on song, mate. I think people are underestimating his chances against some of these other guys. And I think that I, 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 when Connor's on form, I fancy him against anybody. That, no, me too. Him. I agree with yeah, you there, brother, hundred percent. And no, he said that after that, he wants him to retire soon. But he does. And Dana has always said that he's never hid that too. That's one thing he says. You put it on the line for me. I don't give a fuck if you win or lose. If you go in there and you lay it on the line, you fight your fucking to your balls off, I'm going to give you fights. When the crowd, I care about the crowd standing and screaming and clapping their hands after. Do you, do you, want, do you, want, the Mazda, do you want the Mazda Val fight next, then, dear? Is that what you want? Who, who's that? Oh, yeah, that'd be awesome. That fucking uh, oh, Mascadell. I've been watching him since be he was doing awesome, backyard man. fights. Yeah, man, that'd be awesome. I think Connor could, uh, that, that'd be a tough fight for Connor, that would. I'd probably still go with Connor at the end. Because he's really, a better yeah. grappler. Yeah. That would be a fucking dogfight. I, th I, think, I, think I, I think Connor beats Nate quite comfortably in the third. I think uh, Nate's starting to slow. The beatings are taking its toll. I mean, let's be real. Every fight Nate Diaz is in, he looks like a train's fucking hit him afterwards. You know, you, you can only take that sort of punishment for so long. I mean, he's, he's talking like Riddick Bow at the moment. Oh. You, know, you can barely hear a word. His <laughs> scar tissues around his face is terrible. He cuts so oh, easy yeah. now. He's just a ribbon yeah. of scar tissue. Those UFC gloves are made to cut you, though, anyways. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, they they all get caught in that. And by the way, before we continue, real quick, we got Mike. Michael Stott on, on hold for a while here. Michael, are you there? Hey, I'm here. All right, what how happened? you doing, man? What do you want to talk about? Pretty good. I almost hung up, but I don't know. I just wanted to say what's up, dude. One uh, one main thing I want to say, though, BDA. Right. Oh, uh, what's up? There's an echo in the background. Well, hopefully it goes away, man. I don't hear it, but okay. yeah, go ahead. What's up? Uh, anyways, uh, you are, when, when you're on the show... It, it's it's not the same without you, BDA. So you you need to like, you need to like be here at the show. You need yeah, to cut the shit and come on, anyway, come on. He's saying it's not the same without you. In other words, it's like, better when I'm not around. That's what he's saying. But anyway, yeah, go ahead, Michael. What's up? Like you're you're the shit, BDA. Put it that way. All right, thank you, thank you. 
You're making me uncomfortable here with the price, but go. yeah, what put else? Put the man? ball down. Put the ball down, Marco. Go. You're <laughs> Ryan Garcia. Put it that way, all right? Oh, all right. right. Did, he, did he say Ryan you ain't shit, shit, or he said you're the day? I just want to clarify that. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> like, yeah, I love you, man. I love you. <laughs> all right, so, Michael, go ahead, man. Thank you for the price, man. Thank you. Uh, what's up? I don't know. I've been waiting for so long. I've mostly just been listening, but uh, I could, like, chime in on anything. Uh, First, well, uh, shit, I don't know. You guys are talking about all kinds of shit. So, um, is there anything you want you want to know from your viewers? Like you would want to know right now? I want to want to know if people really do hate Clarissa Shields, or or if they dislike her because oh, of her attitude. There you go. That's a well, good I can answer to that one. You I don't need Michael for that one. I can answer that one. The answer is yes. And, and what, what? hates her. Well, why do I, you I, did, did, I don't know anyone that likes her. She she's her she's a her. she's a horrible she's a horrid woman. Let's be real. She's a, and it's not because of any other reason but her arrogance and narcissism, her, her delusion. Her brother almost that. killed that guy. She didn't give. A yeah, shit. that was just, yeah. What a scumbag family as well. The genes as well. Fucking what what a scumbag family she comes from. And let's be real, the delusion. I'd I'd knock out men. Not 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 in my world. You couldn't. I'm knockout men fighters. I'm not in my world. So, so Stuart, in yours maybe, not in mine. Stuart, what do you think? What do you? She think can't even stop women. She's got about oh, one KO. Is oh no, no, Stuart, Michael, Stuart, Michael, Michael, Michael wants to ask you a question. Go ahead, Michael. Go ahead, well, go ahead Michael. Go ahead. Does Stuart, does Stuart think that I know that she's a little old, but do you think that it would be cool to see Layla Ali come out of retirement and get in shape and kick Shields ass at 42 years old? No, because Layla Ali is an old woman now. What do I want to see an old woman come back for? And, yeah, no. You know, I mean, is, is boxing that sad where we have to drag these fucking pensioners back from the deck? <laughs> yeah, I mean, Layla Ali is Are we really beautiful... that low at the moment where we have to do that? Layla Ali has though, a beautiful I'd rather, see, I'd rather yeah. see fucking Katie Taylor in a catchweight go and get her ass whooped because she's far too small. But even that would be more exciting than watching Layla Ali come back. I mean, well, what's next? Look, I don't want to see. Nicole, he's, Nicole, he's, I don't want to see Layla Ali's China. What's Kirkland's China? Layla Ali's beautiful face get fucked up by a dyke. So. Oh no. She's a. She has a very pretty face, Layla Ali. She does. She's a. Actually, she's a good looking woman. I would. I would try to get with her. <laughs> if she ain't not. If she ain't know how to fight, you know. Kind of, I would definitely yeah. try to get with her. Kind of I mean, like her dad, but. That's, that's, no. I mean, fucking um. <laughs> Katie Taylor's becoming the Felix Sturm of women's boxing. I mean, a gift decision. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how long she's going to be um, keeping them tight. She looks like she's ready to be beat at any time. Eddie Earns overworked her. Well, he's, he's used her like a donkey, and um, it's starting to take its toll on him. Fucking the RSPCA will soon be coming to I collect can... it or the donkey sanctuary or something because she's got nothing left. I mean, it's just it's sad to see really. But um, I think these girls are catching up to Katie Taylor quite quickly. And I, I think it's a matter of time before someone takes them belts. As for Clarissa Shields, no one in her division, I'm afraid. <clears throat> no one in her division. There's, there's just no one there for her to fight. So I She's know, boring know. too, man. You know, yeah, she, well, she's, she's got no power, is she? There you go, Sorry. People keep talking to me that. about her. It's so I said, boring. you know what, let me, give, let me just see some, like a fight of hers or like highlights. Boring. Mother. Like she is... Nah, no good for me. Mr. Mr. BD, I wanted to address that. Oh, go ahead. I wanted to address that. A lot of people think that she's exciting or whatnot, but it's like, every, you know, like, she's not even in the top 10 of Box Rick, okay? And a lot of people, like, are like, oh, well, Box Rick ain't shit and whatever. I mean, I mean, yeah, you can argue about Box Rick. But, like, she's only had 10 fights, okay? Who's she really, really beaten? Is she really that excited? She's been put on her ass already. She doesn't really have a lot of power. You know, does she really I mean, have punch? Fucking powers? Christina Rubber Mallet. I'm not even going to call her Hammer. Rubber Mallet. She was dreadful. I mean, she looked like a mal she was in like a malfunction Robocop in there. Just stiff. <laughs> and fucking. Yeah, yeah, but that, that's a good point. She's got no power. Uh, she only got an accumulation stoppage, like two, two of them. When they were stopped on their feet out of 12 fights, only two stoppages, and she's been put on her ass. So she can't punch, and she can't really take a punch. Well, so no, we'll see if we'll. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like I said, when, I think the final story for me was well, the final story for me when she was saying about equal pay. I mean, is this woman for real? Equal pay for what? For what you deliver, and for someone like um, 
Canelo and Golovkin deliver. Well, you you want to get the same money as them? Get out of here, man. Equal pay. This is what I mean about. I see these women in the UK want to want equal pay football. You know, look at our Premier League, a fucking brand watched all over the world. Who who watches women fo women's football in England? No, not even the English people. How right. can they expect to get? And now she said she broke. Well, it's technically it's true. She went backwards though, 168, 160, and 54, where she's the quickest uh, person ever to gain three titles in uh, less fights. I think like 10, 12 fights. Yeah, but what uh, does it mean? Yeah. Does, what does, does it 68, mean? Does 68 people in, at 160 pounds, right? 68 women in the whole sport worldwide. Yeah, it's like, 68 yeah. professional women, oh, no. professional middleweights. <laughs> The joke, man. It's like, I mean, being the women's uh, world champion, it's a bit like winning your race at school. It just doesn't mean anything to anyone. It's like does being it? the hardest chick at fair. Yeah, school race at the end of the year, you'd win it. What does it mean? Nothing. You're the fastest. Smartest kid with Down syndrome. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> fucking, you know what I mean? Like, fuck. Well, you know what, man? To be, know, fair, right, man. <laughs> to be fair, in this situation, because she's getting, uh, Clarissa Shields is getting some heat because she's going after Leila Ali. But to be fair, in this situation, Leila Ali was the one that started. But then again, all listen, what Leila Ali said that she, there's not that many women, but female boxes out there of quality. And Clarissa Shields right away went uh, street on her saying, how about, we, you know, you say that to my face, blah, blah, blah. Well, she didn't say that specifically, but you know, you know what I mean. She went down that route. Now, some people are saying in the comment section, for example, they're saying, uh, some guy said that um, I don't understand Shields' attitude. She reminds me of a young Zab Judah. Somebody said I don't know how she went from that smiley Olympic gold medalist who people would like to would liken to Sugar Ray Leonard's in terms of endorsements and companies to this. Maybe she wanted to do the Mayweather thing, and uh, maybe she wanted to do the Mayweather thing rather than do a fake smile for the cameras, but to each their own. Somebody else says she looks like Floyd Mayweather too, but with longer hair. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd say more like Mitch Green. Let's be honest. If, if a woman has something attractive about her, um, it's it's gonna be, uh, it's not gonna necessarily be boxing. It's gonna be the looks, and she doesn't have. And on top of that, listen, society is I, even though completely as much as you can, you know, eviscerate white people, endorse people who take an attitude. You know, people can say what they want. I just sat back and I'm not blocked by her. I purposely don't interact with it because she blocks everybody. And I like to see what she fucking, you know, people talk about. And all she does, she'll fucking call Steve Kim a racist when he was defending. She, so she's not a very intelligent person, too. Let's establish that, mm -hmm. right? So you, you take the fact that she's a low IQ individual and she talks above her pay grade. She talks on things she has no idea what she's talking about. She says things that are patently false all the time. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, and so you take that, mix that with abrasive attitude. Nobody likes a fighter starts calling himself the best in the world before they've done anything. And then she takes every personal, every every comment on Twitter like a personal assault, like it's somebody saying to your face. Listen, when somebody's name is fucking, you know, Jacob seven seven dash four nine, he's got a picture of a middle finger from his avatar. He's not a brave dude talking shit to you so why interact with them you know what i mean like right. don't get into it with them but that's the thing is she fights everybody everything's and you know then you hear about then i, I wanted to go deeper because i never like to just judge people because i you, you your path who you were as a child your child everybody makes who you are don't let anybody ever fool you what you went through as a child develops into everything and that's she right. had a horrific childhood and you can never blame a kid for that i mean her mother was a fucked up person on drugs she ended up taking off and moving in with the grandmother like when she was 12 yeah, then she but should she be a role model then so, jimmy yeah, she she but see that but that goes with two so when you take somebody though right Stu, when they don't have the right people around them and what it still is it comes out as she had a terrible stutter i guess she couldn't even talk and like they picked on her mercilessly in school for a stutter she just got over it i guess not three or four years ago so she has a lot of anger and a lot of bitter and i and i feel for her and i can understand that and she's taking it out on the wrong people so she thought she was going to get like the black you know people more behind if she came out you know till this day bullshit and she's always commenting on that and the thing is it's like 
you know, don't don't act like you've been dealing with depression, you know, kid. That, First of all, you're 20 years old. Know, it's just bullshit, find, dude. She lives in a black city. I find city. that stuff hurts you. As an athlete, right, that stuff hurts you in America, right, when you start bringing that shit out. You've only got to see what happened when um, the NFL players started um, filing. Yeah, yeah, it just, it's bullshit. They, you know, because... it, it, hurt, it hurts her careers, man. And um, in the day, Deontay Wilder, when he, till this day, coming, that, that hurt him, man. That hurt him because when you look at the numbers he did, are the numbers has he, has he become a star overnight because of that? No, a lot of people have turned off him seeing that. I know he might have had a point, even if he's got a point, keep that shit away from boxing. We don't want to hear it. We don't want to hear Clarissa Shields whining and fucking moaning on Twitter like some girl that just can't get over a fucking period or something. You know, I just that stuff needs to be kept away from boxing and, and it will hurt your career. But as for Lewis, Clarissa Shields, quite a talented girl she's not a bad she's not a bad fighter i'll give her that she's not she's not well she's not well worldy is she she's she don't need to set the world alight but she's not bad and she's done well for herself but she needs to keep in her lane you're talking about knocking men out and stuff in in, in her division and you know being being paid the same as the top men. I mean, what what planet is this fucking girl on? But she said what about it. About how much more she better? It's right? how... the entitlement. Exactly. That, that <clears throat> well, I tell you hey, what, BDA. though. Yeah. You know, no, that's pretty funny, though, dude. Can you imagine? Hey, you know how? I, I bet it's pretty hard, like trying to, pr to promote fights with like fucking girls that are like, you know, like you got to schedule their pyramid cycle. So, like, when they schedule fights with promotion and stuff. I wonder if they're like, hmm. All right, we got to calculate when's this when this chick gonna be on our period. Are you both both you chicks are gonna be like uh, in between periods when you're uh, fight night? <laughs> I never that's even a... thought of that, dude. You guys <laughs> yeah, ever think pretty... about that? Like, I didn't, no, no, I didn't, I didn't think, think I didn't think of that either. They can't fight when they're on the period, can they? That's true. That's a good point, man. They certainly can't wear white trunks. Otherwise, uh, something that that's they don't want could show. Up. I prefer yeah. women's well, wrestling. No, I, I prefer women's blow, wrestling than I do to women's like, boxing. They're just, it's just, it's more fun for me. Well, the UFC's and better. And they're gonna cut the cameras off, mm -hmm. like, oh, little kids, don't, don't look. Do your discretion advise. Yeah, that's a, that's what I I'm prefer, saying. I, I prefer a woman's UFC to women's boxing. I'll be honest. I, I tell you what, some of them women, some of them women UFC fighters are quite uh, the savages, man. Quite the dudes is a fucking psycho. That's, yeah, she is. <laughs> yeah, man. Who's the one that knocked out um, Cyborg? That was Amanda Nunes, wasn't it? No. Yeah, um, that's no, so, yeah, she left. She went to Bellator because she refused to fight nudes. So right away, she gave she had one offer, like she was supposed to fight her. She had an injury, and then something else happened, and fucking Whitehead, screw, your dad pulled the contract. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Hey, by the way, I just wanted to... two chances to fight her. Just wanted to say real quick that um, Clarissa Shields, you know, it's a shame what she went through when she was a, a a young girl but again it's it's everybody has a choice to act a certain way later on the past is the past and her fans don't necessarily seem to be the the best people out there for example she was on sway in the morning which is a radio show and i'm just reading through the comments here and somebody goes black people let's make sure we support clarissa in all of her endeavors now if somebody is the same race as you but it's a bad person you still have to Support that person just because they're the same race. Right, and... Peter Fart, man. You think I'm going to support a pedophile? Exactly. Because he's, he's white. And then somebody Listen, goes. Listen, mate. You support a person from his character and his um, <coughs> the way he conducts himself. You don't not for his color of his skin. If you if you're supporting people for the color of the skin, then you're just as bad as as some of the people you're you're fucking supporting. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey Stu, did you hear what Tom Brady did? What happened with Tom Brady? No, I didn't. Why? Well, I, I guess. Well, he has a child with another woman, right? And uh, before he got married to Giselle, I guess he, there's some court thing going on, whatever. So he had him. She, the wife didn't want to have him, so she sent the police to get him, right? So it was two black cops. And when they showed up, fucking Brady videotaped it. He said, fuck you, stupid niggas. Get off my oh. fucking property, yo. He's saying, yo, look at these niggas. Little wait boy, you never owned a car like Brady, that, can... nigga. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, Tom oh, Brady that's right. That. First no, no, but he, he, no, 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 no. Here's the now here's the clutch, dude. It wasn't Tom Brady. It was Antonio Brown calling cops in front of his children. And he on Instagram, he sent it out. He's calling what a call a, a black person calling a white person a cracker. Make no mistake, is the absolute equivalent as a, a white calling a black person a nigger. That is without that's from time immemorial. 
Well, and One they know it too. So here he is videotaping going, get in the car with them crackers. Look at you. Look at this little small white cracker. Go away. Don't look at that's a Benz boy. You'll never own it, something like that. Now picture the other way around. If that was a white athlete calling cops niggas. Yeah, well, just, like, hey, by the way, it'd comment. be the lead story yeah. on every fucking newscast. Yeah, right. That's one thing about Whitlock. He did say from Fox News, he said white uh, white athletes are held to a completely different standard. He's because he was outraged by this. But this way, I got to give his agent finally dropped him. His agent who would wipe his ass for him. That was enough for him. I mean, he actually sent it out on an Instagram himself. I don't know if you guys saw that. It happened three or four days ago. I was shocked. I'm like, no news is talking about this. Yeah, yeah but Jimmy, you gotta be careful. Yeah, Jimmy, you gotta be careful when you say the N word, though, because even if you. There's it, it. It seems like, uh, and they don't consider the context or anything. Even if you're repeating oh, what you're, somebody okay, said. I'm sorry. All right, that's yeah, because okay. I was using it in the contents how he was using crack. I yeah. know, I know, but to show like know. that's how shocking you would be, right? That would be like that was no different if he did the white pro. In the future, I won't say it. I'll say the n word. I just that's hate saying point. it because I'm not calling anybody that. I know, I know, yeah, but I just, some, there's, I, there's you know people what I mean? out like, there. I just hate when there's people disingenuous. Try to there's this. There's disingenuous people out there that they don't care. They just they hear the word and they'll they'll go insane. I think that. They might have yeah, Down right. syndrome or something. Hey, but, hey, BDA. Yes. You there, brother? Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Uh, hey, I love all you guys, dude. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday night, evening, or whatever. I got to go back to work. And um, I'm going to be there for the next one, dude. Uh, Fantastic, man. Support, dude. Take, take care. Thank you, man. Thank you for your support, brother, Michael. Please. And thank you yeah, for your call. Cool. By the way, we, we also have to go, but uh, here's the thing, though. Now that we got Stu and Jimmy, G we've done two second renaissances in the last two weeks. You motherfuckers haven't been showing up. What's up with that? Yeah. I, dude, no, it was. It was just because maybe it's the East Coast. Maybe I just think it's, I expect it by like 7. I don't know that I expect it, but I get home and, you know, settle in usually around 7, 7.30 during the week and shit. And um, like the last time, honestly, on the renaissance, I had a hockey game. Yeah. So I, I didn't even I, know about it until I got out of the fucking rink, and it was I caught, literally missed it by twenty minutes. And trust me, I was pissed. I would I would have not played that night to call in for that because I'm really looking forward to it. So it's, it's not a, it's not a duck. It's just me being stupid. No, no, no. Not it's a duck. Was, I was I was actually um, tired because I've been arranging the final bits and bobs for my dad's funeral on Friday. So I've been fucking tired, and I just didn't have a enough energy to come on and give give you my thoughts so that's basically what it was well listen um the show is not the same without any of you uh, you guys make up the whole it's like a holographic theory every every single particle represents the whole of the show so everybody here makes uh, their contributions and everybody here is 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 essential to the show so i'm hoping you two guys can show up so far we've covered uh well, last episode last night was about uh, psychos, just general psych. We talked about the Britain's most prolific rapist, who's a homosexual from Indonesia, who was uh, drugging a bunch of guys, taking them back to his <laughs> apartment, and then, uh, you know, just having his way with them. And he got caught. So we talked about that a little bit before the, the week before that we spoke about. Uh, gee, Bucha, what was it? What was the <laughs> before the last episode? Oh, uh, cannibal. No. Last episode was cannibals. Cannibals. No, before that though. Before, not, not, not. Oh, celebrities that fake their deaths and. Yeah, celebrities that fake their deaths, and we we touched a little bit on that, but then we started talking about. Yeah, that would have and... been. I didn't know about that show. That would have been a really interesting. Um, what, who who did you guys say then? Well, we talked about the one that you talked about all the time, uh, Paul McCartney. And uh... Uh, but you, none of you guys are not buying that though. You're, you're not. You're not. You're not, yeah. you're not seeing things. You know, you're not I, seeing, you're, like, you're not looking at the thing. evidence. The albums, I looked into uh... it. But, but, Joe's, but Joe's just got this ignorance where, he's, you know, <laughs> it's one of them where, oh, no, load of bollocks because I've never heard that before, so it can't be true. But you just have a look at it. I'm surprised. Might, there might, might be rumors that Paul was killed? No, that, there's a rumor going around. I mean, there's, um, watch the George Harrison tapes on YouTube. It's basically, it was left by George Harrison before when he died by his lawyer handed it in. I've obviously, that when they make and he's been a like, testimony to say that, um, and there's a lot of clues in the songs as well. And this this documentary, the George Harrison tapes, will show you that Paul McCartney actually, the real Paul McCartney, died in um, in 1960 in a car crash. Seven, can't right? Yeah, no, they say. 19... Yeah, so so Paul McCartney just... blew his mind out in a crash. Yeah, so that's right. And... All, all those hints, and if you watch yeah, but... on Abbey Road. 
at, he's the only one not walking in the same. They all have one. They all yeah. have their right foot, and um, Paul has his left foot going, and he has a cigarette. Oh, there's, in one there's, hand. there's, there's and, interviews and no shoes, with him, no and they've shoes. actually called him Billy. Yeah. Oh, here you are, Billy. Is Billy because his name was William Shears, the guy that replaced him. That's why they didn't do any live um, sets for two years because this guy was basically he was um, a guy that was a. Uh, he used to go around pretending to be Paul McCartney in, in shows and stuff, but they got him. But he was a better musician, they reckon, and that's why um, he had. He looked very, very like him, and he sounded like him. But they had to do surgery with the guy or something. It took a lot. So of in surgery. essence, though, right? It is. Paul that's McCartney. why they wasn't doing live shows for years, they, and they were just doing studio stuff. I'm, I'm not saying this is all true, but you've just got to look at some of the evidence. That's all I'm saying. And no, then they how said, interesting um, though, right, Stu? Because in essence, yeah. he has become Paul. Now you know what I mean. If that was all, you say if that's all true, in essence, he really is become Paul McCartney. Well, when you look at it for forty what, years, right, or fifty years. Listen, crazy, go, and, right? go and watch an interview with Heather Smalls, his ex-wife. Right, she's going frantic. Right, when they have split up. And she was saying, I protected you, Paul. You know, and she she was basically saying she knows something that could finish him. She knows something. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she was going to watch. It. She was saying she, she's got to sit, but she's always protected him, right? And I think what that was, she knows that he's not the original Paul McCartney. you got to remember back then, Beatles was a, a, a brand. The amount of money they were bringing to the government. And there was like, it wasn't, Beatles wasn't like a person anymore. It was a brand. If someone else died, someone else would have replaced them. It's like, you know, the, it continues. It was just a, and still, um, still my great uncle was and a George pop. Harrison, George Harrison was going to come out, right? And say something because he was ill, right? He was going to come out and say something. And someone came into his house and stabbed him in his fucking mansion, yeah. stabbed him, nearly killed him, man. And they re he reckons that was, um, the MI5 because it was something to do with MI5. Oh, come on. Listen, listen. Stu, you're really into this theory, but um, I looked into it. Uh, listen, we, we should save it for, for another second right now. Was that? <laughs> I'm going to tell you, just to say how big they were, my, my great uncle was a Boston cop at the time, and they were almost time to retire. When they came to Boston in 1965, that was the first, you know, city they got to. They, they had to rent the whole top floors and they put tinfoil on all the windows because they were just inundated. But what happened when they checked out, people ran up and everywhere they thought they stayed, people on their knees and cutting up the carpet and selling it for 50. They were selling like 50 cents a square inch. It was, they were scratching them and trying to get their skin under. The, it was yeah. like nothing. There'll never be another <laughs> band like them. That's Listen, it was right. crazy. It's just like this, right? you got to look at it, right? Sometimes... Things are not what you, you think they are. Your brain washed to think something. It's like 9-11. When 9-11 happened, I was uh -oh. fucking furious. I was like, yeah, go on, get him Bush, get him Blair, go and take... Didn't think, didn't think. I just believed what the fucking news was telling me. I believe what... But when you start... Because you're a good person, you, older, you wouldn't believe that people would do that to their own. You don't. You, the thought of... A thought of a government doing that to their own people just went it's past... Beyond, me. It's beyond as, fucking as, belief. As the internet came along and all these documentaries and there's been some real good evidence come out that i know that that was an inside job i know that the the uh -oh. fucking the it's arabs didn't do that. It's just too much they didn't it's do too that much one. there well yeah, listen and like i said so you've got to look into all of there's a lot of things that i don't believe the moon landing happened either i don't believe that well listen we'll talk about all of that and more on second renaissance so uh you guys better show up you're on you're on alert now all right when is that alert man when is it I'll make it, brother. When is it? Well, <laughs> my girl will make sure I make it. If I tell her I have to make it, she never fucking lets me down. I'll tell right. her so. Well, now you're putting me on the spot. Um, oh, hold on a second. Well, no, just give me no. no you're not coming now, but next time it's coming up, send me a DM just you know, a couple of days or a day before, and I'll let her know, and you know, she'll make sure that I... Because I smoke a lot of weed, dude. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I got, I got, what can I do, dude, man? <laughs> BD, yeah, I think the name of the of the channel makes it a little bit hard to find. In the beginning, I couldn't find it. Second yeah, that's true. Huh? But I think you have to write the second Renaissance, not just second Renaissance. The okay. thing is, I like the people just people. A lot of these guys that watch this show, they're not ready for second Renaissance. They're not ready for it. They're not ready to open up their minds, man. They're just fucking brainwashed sheep, and they get, oh, you guys are fucking lunatics. Where well, you should be in asylum. <laughs> Well, listen. That's the problem uh, with the second round of fun. It's it's gonna we're gonna get a. Uh, it's not just gonna be the people. We already have a lot of people from BDA over there, but it's not gonna be everybody. Obviously. Also, I want to give a shout out to Jason Bourne, who just donated via the super chat. He says Stu is the real Paul McCartney. Now that would make a lot of sense. Yeah. For sure. But uh, <laughs> you, you know what? It's interesting. We we can do um 
any type of uh, subject. We wanted to talk about, uh, we were talking yeah. about this last night, about what other subject we could talk about. We were thinking maybe uh, <laughs> those people that claim, they call themselves zoophiles, with their, just, it's just people that fuck animals, and also maybe do something on. Oh uh, no, I don't want to talk about. Uh, that, okay, okay, man. but then Come it was on, also. But here's well, the thing. Okay, I, I gotta explain. I, I gotta to explain something. About. I gotta explain something. These episodes of Second Renaissance, it's not just one subject. What we do is we have a subject, and then we just talk about whatever else comes to mind. It's organic, wherever it goes, wherever exactly. We are, but fucking animals, man! Can't you think of anything better than that? Come on. No, I can't. No, yeah. Well, we did come up with. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we did come up with mass shootings. We, we wanted but, to look sorry, into mass. Man. We wanted to look into mass shootings and uh, what's up with YouTube not allowing people to question them because that's an interesting subject. I, that, yeah, that that would be a great topic because that last that Las Vegas shooting that's that's, that's something strange about that. I'm yeah, there was it. something really. Well, they don't, they don't want you to talk about the numbers because if mass shooting qualifies as four four or more victims. Doesn't mean four or more people have to die. Just four more people shot at one time is considered a mass shooting by FBI standards. And yep. just don't what I found it bizarre. The actual numbers. Uh, what I That's, found bizarre is right. either Americans are so used to gunshots it just didn't phrase phase them. That, that this guy's spraying fucking right um <laughs> Fucking machine guns and rifles, and these they're just walking by it. Then, <laughs> like, look, I'd have been on my toes, mate. I'd have, looked, I'd have been like you saying, Bolt. It's just going to show you where they grow up, dude. Believe me, yeah. If I hear fucking even to this day, dude, so I hear something even sometimes some firecrackers between buildings will have that crack of almost because it's a sort of totally different sound. The handguns, there's fire, videos on YouTube, people totally driving different. towards the fucking gunshots. Oh, yeah, look, there he is yeah. over there. <laughs> 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 uh, 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 around you would hear the pop and the whiz in a, yeah. in a gunshot or a rifle shot. You hear the whiz. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if it's near you, man. I've had yeah, people, a farmer shooting at us once. But, yeah, what? No, man. <laughs> the fuck? No, we were fucking stealing corn on the cob and he was shooting rock salt <laughs> at us. Hey, Jesus. Hey, hey. Someone mentioned bush. That someone mentioned the bushfires in Australia, right? Wouldn't be surprised if that was started by a man try and blame the. the oh, they're saying eighty um, percent of them are fucking. They just had a, a news. They just had a thing on it the other night. Eighty percent are figuring to be arson right now. It's yeah, wouldn't surprise me. That's, the, that's how they can blame it on the climate and all them climate change fucking weirdos uh, can get their own way. Right. That's all that is. Man. No, but th yeah, but that's what that was. No, so my, I was dating this girl, Aaron, before and she had a horse, and it was expensive to feed him. So we drove by this field, and it was. Fucking miles of corn it looked like. I'm like, look at these big fat ass. Let's go grab some of the horse. And then, yeah, I know this motherfucker started firing rounds off with um, rock salt at me and my buddy. And it kept, we would just load up. We'd hear a whistle over our heads. Jeez. Yeah, prick. Yeah. Well, I mean, you were still in his corn after all. But um, that's no reason to shoot somebody. That's for sure. Well, now, rock salt, it just burns like a motherfucker. I've been hit by, by accident once in my leg. I still okay. got a fragment of a fucking ricochet off a sidewalk still lodged in my uh, fucking right front leg <laughs> behind Jeez. my calf. Oh, hey, I'm reading the chat. Oh, poor old, poor old Barry Hurd's been, um, someone's linking him to pedophilia in the chat, man. Oh, come on. No, I, <laughs> <laughs> my goodness gracious. It just goes all over the place, hey. man. This 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 chat's a fucking hellhole of a place, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> yeah. it it's embarrassing. It's, it's like that prison in the film Undisputed that in Russia, isn't it? That's what the BDI fucking shit. <laughs> yeah, man. Listen, this chat room can cool, be like... nobody's safe from this chat room. Oh, Every, we all get it. We all get it from the people in the chat room. That's why I like it. It's nobody's safe. Yeah. We're all equal. It, We're makes, like it makes the fucking sh this place makes the Shawshank Redemption look like Trump Tower, doesn't it? <laughs> 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 All right, so uh, listen, we're going to end it on that note. Thank you guys for joining us. And what you know what Michael Stott said goes for everybody. Everybody here is a nucleus of the show. Without you guys, the show is not the same. And I want to, and I say that sincerely. I mean, every time one of you is missing, I go, fuck. Well, at least we got, you know, these other people on board. And, and you know, if somebody else doesn't show up, I say, at least we got this one. And it's always fun here on BDA and on Second Renaissance. So I want to thank you guys. Thank you, brother. Thank you guys for being here. I thought that was rain at uh, some point there, but uh, Bucha was playing the clap sounds. Can I say something just, real just fast? Before, just, just before I get called a conspiracy nut job, I'm just open-minded to these things, right? The Paul McCartney thing I do, but, but I'm open-minded to a lot of these things. There could be, if someone comes and shows me a bit of evidence to prove that um, it's not a conspiracy, then, then I'm open-minded to that as well. Just letting you know before you call me some fucking <laughs> nut job. <laughs> No, I agree. I agree. 
Uh, Gonzalo, you want to say something about that? Or Yeah, we had a, an upset this weekend, and I'm not sure if it's going to be an upset, but it's going to be a close fight with Red Cash and Garcia. I think so, That's too. That's what man. I'm calling it. Yeah, I hmm. think so, too. I would love to see that fucking kid beat him. He's got fast hands. I think fat, well, faster than Danny's. He's just not a heavy puncher, so he's going to be hard yep. to keep Danny off him. But Danny's I've been got following six him for a while. Feet. He's got six toes, yes. so. Right Six foot training with Jack Mosley and uh and uh, Shane Mosley, Jimmy. Yep. Yeah, he's got quick hands, so I'd like to see him beat him. I, I mean, I, that kid fucking bugs me. I mean, how can you sit there and say you can belong in the Hall of Fame? He just said that the other day. Who said that? I already that? belong in the Hall of Fame. DSG said it. He already belongs in Get the Hall of Fame. Get out of here. I like DSG, but he's I'd like that. If I need to pull a ring and change the he ain't no, he ain't no all time great. Get out of here. He's the fucking greatest yeah. fucking Walter Wade who ever lived in his neighborhood. That was a hammer night tweet. That's, and, that's an, and, 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 and hey, hey, that's a that's an accomplishment. I'll give him that. Like that's it's not a bad accomplishment yeah, to say Danny, you're the baddest motherfucker in your block. You know, like that's it's not bad. But you ain't no, you're not the baddest fighter that ever Danny's fought at welterweight. Guy, man. Dan, Danny's tough, but Danny never puts it all on the line. When have you ever seen Danny? Just put his head down. I know it's not boxing, but sometimes when you're losing the fight, you won't you well down on the cards. It's the twelfth round. Put your fucking head down and swing and hope one lands. He don't even do that. He fights at one pace all the time, looking for that perfect counter punch. Exactly. I mean, it's just it's it's he's too patient for his own good. He's too is. patient for his own good. You can see the difference. Well, look, if you watch when he fought Matisse, like what a difference. What a difference he was because he was hungry. Money ruins a lot of fighters. And it fucking definitely changed his style. I mean, I, so if you listen to his father, who slung keys, man, I slung keys. Yeah, then why'd you raise your fucking family in a hovel, you scum? Oh, oh, okay. now wait a minute. All no, right, anyway. Minute. Yeah, well, oh, listen, we're gonna we're gonna motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta end on that note, man. But all uh, right, man, you guys all take care, man. Still, you again, sorry about your dad. Good luck with that. Peace, guys. Peace. All right. Take it easy, gentlemen. Thank you for being here. Don't forget to check out Second Renaissance. Don't forget to check out this channel. Don't forget to check out BDA Live, where we do the film analysis. Guys, also, we're going to do another one. We got to do... Remember when we watched um, Joshua Ruiz? We're going to do that, yeah. but let, let's do it with shorter clips and, and break it up into shorter clips, because the second part, we couldn't put it in, because we got uh, we, we got it taken down. Somebody took it down because of copyright or whatever, so that's why we got to keep it shorter and cut it up into smaller parts, but we're going to rewatch. Uh, the best parts of, or the most salient parts, important parts of Fury versus Wilder for the upcoming rematch that's going to be taking place on March. So stay tuned for that one, guys. And um, that should be fun. I want to do that one. Absolutely, absolutely. Don't forget. So, so don't forget to check that out. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Don't forget to, if you have a couple of shekels that you can send our way via the super chat right now. Before that's we right. go, send him, send him a super chat and remember, Epstein didn't kill himself. Oh, now wait a minute. Wait a minute. You can't. Oh, you can't sorry. Say I'm sorry. I apologize. I, I uh, thought I was on a different uh, platform. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, don't forget to also like, subscribe, and uh, check out the Discord. That's about it, gentlemen. Thank you for being on the air. Thank you for being with us. I want to thank um, Stu, recognize Jimmy, Johnny Boy, who was here as well. Gonzalo was here as well for a little while. Um, hopefully, I didn't forget anybody. Uh, my co host, King Bucho, as well. So, on behalf of myself and everybody else, was that? To this day. Okay, come on. You gotta. What, what, what is that? Butcher, why did you put the pitch up, too? You know, we've been fine for and still fine to this day. All right, Butcher, that's that's creepy, man. It sounds like a, like a, a midget version of, uh, of of Deontay Wilder. You gotta cut that up. All right, cut that out. Listen, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Let me just real quick here read the people that donated with the super chat during the show. Come on. I'm trying to get it. I want to thank Chris K, Durden Boxing, a.k.a. Michael Stott. I also want to thank L Dog and Jason Bourne, who donated via the Super Chat. So shout out to you guys. And um, hold on a second here. So yeah, that's that's about it. Thank you guys for joining us. Wait a minute. That's not the that's not the goodbye song. Oh, there you go. I haven't played that one in a long time. Um, I want to give a shout out to everybody that joined us, all the listeners. Thank you, guys. You, this show is not the same without you. And I will say you guys are the best viewers in all of YouTube. I want to give a shout out to In Her Brother, Tell J. Tell J what? One Hitter, Boxing Virus, Jerry Esquible, Boardroom Bully, um, SSB28, Tarvis the Chimp, Boxing Virus, 
Uncle Burnt Apostrophe, Box, Jonathan Morrison, shout out to Jonathan, C188. Uh, who else? Who else? GB Boxing was still in there as well. In there as well. Um, the aforementioned Jason Bourne. Hopefully I didn't forget anybody. Thank you guys. The Fight Scout, shout out to the Fight Scout, Captain from Chicago. I don't know when we're doing the next show. Hopefully soon in during the week. Thanks again for joining us, guys. We'll catch you on the next one, folks. Take it easy.